Shout out to Sharif Garib. That's a pretty sick bull. But we out here doing a podcast. Ready. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and people outside the binary. This is Less Stupid with Thomas Huda, a show that's completely uncut, uncensored, and unwilling to hear anyone talk shit about this guy, one of my best friends in the whole world, Dylan Hudson. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Dylan Hudson. I am a friend of Thomas's. Um, I'm 25 years old, went to North Eugene High School, kind of graduated in 2012. Um, yeah. yeah got views that differ with me on much... A great deal of shit. Yeah. Um, and you're a property manager. Am I supposed manager. to look at the phone or look at you? Ah, it doesn't matter too much. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Just like flip in between. Okay. Yeah. Right on. So let's start it off, man. You have been a fan of the show, mm-hmm. a friend of the show, mm-hmm. as podcasters tend to say. Mm-hmm. So what's a controversial opinion that you have on anything? Uh, I think that the probably the most controversial opinion that I have, and I'm going to... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking at? I don't know the right... Uh, I'm going to flatter myself here because I, I, I think it's funny. But um, I'm actually in the process of, of hiring two leasing consultants right now. And, uh, and we just, we just uh, picked two guys out. But um, one of the things that a couple of the candidates asked me was they said, uh, what's the most difficult thing about this work environment? Okay. And I told them, uh, I said, the God's honest truth is while most people would probably ex- try to explain to you an aspect of the job or, you know, what it is that can be difficult. I said, I think the biggest thing for people to overcome when they get here is me. And, uh, <laughs> and what I accompanied that with, and this would be my controversial opinion, is that um, I really truly believe that anything and everything that we want in this life, and I think you know this, um, 100% we can have it. Mm. And if you don't have it, it's because of choices you've made, period. And so, you know, I ah, let them know. Look I at let, this white guy. I know, and I know. And I, <laughs> I, I, let, I, let, I let them know that, uh, um, you know, like one thing that I tell people right away, and, and, I, and I think this is the kind of stuff that's hard for people to deal with. They say, there will be a time where I'm going to ask you to do something at some point or another, and you won't get it done. And I say, before you tell me whatever excuse it is that you have, don't. Save it. There's never been a good excuse in the history of the world that doesn't exist. Again, anything that you want to make happen, you will make happen, period. Okay. And so, you know, whatever, I can go into why it is that I believe that. But I'd say for most people, that's probably a pretty controversial opinion. Sure. Especially living here in Eugene, Oregon. I mean, uh, you, that's that's like what I hear is pre- prosperity gospel, Creflo Dollar, Joel Osteen, people mm-hmm. who preach that basically, you know, God wants you to have abundance in your life and abundant opportunities there if you're if you're willing to, to take it. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit manifest destiny ish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say that we I there have been a lot of spaces in my life in growing up in very progressive spaces where I I I, I don't agree, frankly. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. agree with what you're saying sure. because I think it doesn't acknowledge the systemic factors that lead to inequality. Mm-hmm. But um, there is tremendous opportunity there for a whole lot of people. Um, and if we ignore that, then you, you can get into a sort of cycle mm-hmm. where you're like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get addicted to drugs mm-hmm. or I'm going to go ahead and not make much of my situation because I don't feel like I can, or I don't mm-hmm. need to. Mm-hmm. And that, that's sad. Mm-hmm. I, I've and I've experienced a lot of people where they're they're in that space. Yeah, and what that often amounts to is hatred for the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean obviously to, uh, and maybe it's not obvious, but I think that to have an opinion like that, obviously there's a. Uh, hopefully, I guess for anybody, any, any opinions that anybody has, there's a tremendous amount of thought that goes into it and, and getting there. And, um, you know, I wasn't sure how, how much we were going to go into this, but, uh, with this specific thing, it's not something that I like to really try to get into the weeds about too much, just because generally I think it's something that you like, you either receive it or you don't. I really don't believe that there's anybody ever that, that preached to somebody why that sort of viewpoint is beneficial and then like change their mind. You know mm. what I mean? I think that that's something that happens over time and with experience and like you either just choose that like, that's how you want to live your life mm. um, or you don't. And I would say um, <clears throat> in my experience, right. 
it's not that I disagree with what you're saying, right? Sure. In that, in that, in that uh, maybe maybe there is an argument that there are certain people that have circumstances that are completely out of their grasp. Like one one says where I said like I, I will totally agree is is with children, right? Okay. I mean, so there's a certain age, and I don't know exactly what I think the bracket is, right? <laughs> um, where uh, truly anything that happens to you that's that's anything other than heaven on earth. You know, um, um, the most ideal situation is a tragedy because you can't do anything about it. You know, you're a five-year-old or you're a 10-year-old or right. maybe even you're a 12-year-old or you're a 13-year-old. Right. But um, for me, uh, if I don't have something that I want to have, even mm-hmm. if I know that this core value that I have is nonsense, right? right I'd rather believe in it mm-hmm. because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm essentially making a choice to believe that I have some control over my destiny. Right. And I think that in terms of living a happy life, um, for me, the notion that I don't have control over my outcomes is sad and, mm-hmm. and, and disappointing and depressing, mm-hmm. you know? And so even if that's true, uh, like, I'll just go ahead, you know, I'll go ahead and sip the Kool-Aid and believe the nonsense because I think that that's... Um, you know, Oops. more likely to, I'm going to go ahead and just turn my phone off. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. I was going to try to hit the ignore rep, but <laughs> I don't want that to be an issue. Well, let me say that. I'm not even sure I know how to turn iPhones off. <laughs> you hold down Wish the lock button. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And one thing about uh, our friendship is that you have basically told me that you, your mom, uh, who was, I don't know if I would say a more stable source of uh, parenting than your dad because mm-hmm. they both had, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know how much you want to get out there and mm-hmm. put it out in the public, but I'll mm-hmm. just say that she basically had told you that she doesn't unconditionally love you mm-hmm. and that you were thrown into a sink or swim situation, mm-hmm. what, in high school? Mm-hmm. In high school? Right yeah. after we graduated. I mean, right. if you're referring to when she moved away. Right. Yeah, yeah actually. So right after that. Yeah, and I stuck summer. around in town for a year before mm-hmm. going to college and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I think that that, you, what you had basically experienced out of that was, I don't know if gratitude is the word, mm-hmm. but like that that's something that some people need. I mean, we, we've known people who basically yeah. have everything handed to them for their whole lives. Yeah. And their parents just, you know, mm-hmm. they, what, what happens when their parents die? They're in their late twenties, they're in their thirties and mm-hmm. they're still like, you know, getting everything paid for and getting, getting everything yeah. hooked up. It's yep. like, well, it's it, not life. Yeah. So just to try to elaborate more in, in, um, without going super far into detail is, yeah, basically I think that, you know, I was in a situation where, and thankfully I, I did live with my dad for probably about three or four months, but I'd only ever been with my mom my whole life. She moved away two months after I graduated from high school. And then a girl who I was dating at the time, who was the only thing that I cared about in this world also moved away. Sure. And so I was in Eugene essentially by myself sure. and, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, people respond to those kinds of like, you know, you're in your developmental years, et cetera. Mm. So they respond to those kinds of situations differently. Um, right away, uh, pretty shortly after that all happened, like exactly what you said, I became overwhelmed with gratitude and realized that I had, you know, an opportunity and, 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 uh, you know, instead of letting that bring me down, I was thankful for the things that I did have and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, you know, there, 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 there's so many, there's so many, one of, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why I don't like to articulate, um, in, in great depth again, like why I believe what I believe is, is mm-hmm. kind of based off this idea again, that, that, uh, I don't really believe that I'm going to change anybody's mind a interesting. Right? And so, um, I would rather not, not, uh, not that I don't want to converse or that I'm not willing to listen to other people's opposing viewpoints to mine in great depth. Mm -hmm. I just don't care to share mine with them if I know that they're not already on the same page. Like if I'm going to go super deep with somebody about why I believe what I believe and and how I got there, I'd rather it's somebody that's already kind of on the same page as me. And in short, um, the reason why is that I'm not oblivious to the fact that what I believe and why I believe it is unbelievably circumstantial. Yes. And so, and so for me, no matter how real it is to me, no matter how right it is to me, mm. right, to believe that I can share it with you and you should just be able to sip on it the same way that I can, <laughs> that's not real. Mm. We've walked different paths. 
Mm. You know, the super easy way that I like to put it, just in case, you know, I'm just, I just want to make sure that one of my other reasons I talk so much, you mentioned on Katie's the podcast with yeah, Katie. I was going to try to keep, one, was gonna try to keep yeah. that to a limit. I'm a talker, but um, no, it's fucking I, great. I, I, I don't want to go off the cuff, but uh, you know, just to try to make sure everybody understands the way I want to be understood is like, you know, I understand, for example, this is something I try to be mindful of is like, there are beliefs and ideologies that we have in this country, for example, for no other reason other than we were born in this country. Like <laughs> there are countries out there where, you know, the church and state are not separated and yeah. there are incredibly oppressive societies. And I'm not going to name a, names. A number of faiths. Yeah. You know, and, I'm, and I'm not, and I'm not going to name Judaism, names where maybe Hinduism, for example, um, uh, for, for, for where maybe for example, feminism, the way that we, we know it in the West uh -huh. is not a thing. Okay. At all in those places, right? In many of them, yeah. Now, now, do I believe, right, that I do, I, I want to push back a little bit on that idea that you know, oh, we're the we're the Western uh, society that you know, feminism is uh, an important part of our society, and everyone else just treats women like shit. That's that's, that's not what I'm saying. False. That's dichotomy. not what I'm saying at all. all. Right? That's okay. not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that I'm able to receive the idea, for example of feminism, the way that, that we have it in this country, the way that I respect women's rights, you know, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. part and parcel because I was born here. Okay. Not because I'm woke. Because <laughs> if I was born in one of these places where I'm not being indoctrinated with these values as a, as a small child, and thank God I am, I might not respect women the way that I do. Mm. And so... You know, I'm like, I'm just hyper aware of that. I'm hyper aware that I believe what I believe, not only because of who I was raised by and how I was raised in the, but literally geographically where I'm located, Okay, you know, is going to affect the way that I receive information. And, and so, you know, for that reason, like, I just think it's silly to try to, to try to beat people in the face with, you know, this is why you need to think this way. Cause, cause, yeah. cause coming to deep philosophical beliefs is just way more complicated than that. And, and all those variables, where you're located, what kind of media you consume, what kind of parents you had, those what kind of upbringing big. you had, what kind of school you went to, what kind of job you have, what kind of person you are. Sure. Like, those are all variables there, you know? I got a couple things to say to that. Yeah, sorry. No, it's great. Uh, for, the, for the first thing, it's like, why... <laughs> it's, a, it's a tragedy that you're fairly convinced that you're not going to be able to get people to change their worldview fundamentally because you as a person are incredibly convincing. <laughs> and so like, there's a deep irony there to me um, because, because you do have that ability to do that. And second, it's like, why? Okay. You, you know that when kids come up, you talked about what schools people went to and their parents, um, they are spongy and, and mm -hmm. they are, they're absorbing information like from all over. And, um, you know, I talked to Katie Harvey, uh, DJ Kalian about like, um, you know, people in high school who their parents were very anti LGBT mm -hmm. and then like mm -hmm. th them and even their parents have come along mm -hmm. on, on that in, absolutely. in big ways. And that's like, that's not a little thing. No. That's huge yeah, to be absolutely. able to say that like, okay, you think being gay is gross and immoral and AIDS, blah, blah, blah. And now you're like, those people are my neighbors and they love each other. Just like my, I love my wife. Yep. So that's pretty big. It's like, so what my question is at what, is there an age like 17, 18, 25, 36, 49, you know, where people are no longer are able to really change their fundamental worldview? I don't think so. No, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't think so. It's, it's, again, it's not so much that I don't think that people can or will. I just don't think that it's, I'm the one. You know? <laughs> I don't, okay. I don't have, I don't have the patience for it in the sense that I'm incredibly passionate. Right. And, and, uh, again, I am willing to be incredibly combative with people who I love and care about. Right. That is not the case with people who I don't love and care about. Sure. And so if you're not somebody who I love and care about, I will not fight you mm. about, you know, the philosophical ideas that I believe are the, are the givers of life. Yeah. I won't. Yeah. You know? So if you ain't trying to hear what it is that I'm trying to, that I'm trying to sell, you know, you ain't trying to buy what I'm trying to sell, which generally you can, you can make that assumption pretty early on in a conversation. Let's talk about the weather. I'm not <laughs> yeah, saying, not because gonna, let, let, let's be clear. I'm yeah. not saying I won't be friends with these people. Yeah. I'm not saying I won't associate with them. I'm not saying I won't buy them a meal or hire them in my workplace. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I don't want to talk philosophy with you. Okay. You know, not yeah. you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So. Fair enough. Um, just, I, I'm, I'm thinking. thinking back to a time when uh, we, <laughs> we went to uh, Carlton College when I, well, 
I was a student there and you were visiting and we had a, lot of, day, we had a lot of fun. I'm doing. looking at the camera. One of the coolest things I've ever done in my <laughs> life. Super thankful for that experience. Right on, dog. I appreciate that. Well, let me shout out Brandon Davis who never came to Carlton. That, that to this day, that bothers me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, cause it was, a, it's, a, it's like a very unique place and yeah. people, people there were, um, simultaneously some of the most like humble, brilliant, like intellectually curious people who wanted to, uh, have a, have a really legitimate, rich understanding of the world and not just get a piece of paper degree that allows them to go into accounting and blah, blah, blah. and not to totally discounting or whatever, but, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. like the easy, easy thing to mention or like okay sports business like we mm-hmm. don't have we we have enough sports marketing people like in the world you know right. what i mean right. but simultaneously and we see this with college campuses man like people people who are right leaning speak about this a lot like this naivete that mm-hmm. they have where um and like this mob mentality this this tendency to quell quote unquote free speech, depending on what mm, you what mm-hmm, you believe free mm-hmm, speech is mm-hmm, as a concept, you know, and mm-hmm. we can get into that. Sure. Um it's like it's like a really interesting balance because it's just like one of those examples where a lot of these people that I was friends with, and frankly I'm not friends with a lot of them now, mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. amazing people individually, but people are like coming together and they're trying to be super woke and they're trying to perform what it is to be Someone who doesn't get outcasted. No one wants to go and spend $62,000 a year and go be a part of a community only to like, you know, have it like be discovered that you made some kind of misstep in your philosophy, in your like, I don't know, African American studies course. And then like everybody thinks you're, you're ex this or, or whatever. You're right. You have this white supremacist sympathy because you like used a, the wrong word or something. And right, it's like, right, right. so people are trying extra hard to not only meet that standard themselves of like, I am a good progressive person, mm-hmm. but also frankly, because people are in, in groups and they're mm-hmm. 18 to 22 year olds, mm-hmm. there's a culture of per- like, I don't know if persecution is the right word, but like, you know, hey, you're not only not a, a good enough woke person if you don't act this way, but you have to you have to condemn people who mm-hmm. fail on mm-hmm. that metric. Mm-hmm. And that was frustrating. But I yeah. don't know. The, the thing I wanted to say, I guess, was that you were in my educational studies course and you re- maybe read a little bit of the reading beforehand, but like then you, you came in and you're the only person who I've ever had visit a school, a class, and you like jumped into the conversation, and like people around, I think we're just like, Who, who's this person? <laughs> yeah, that was but that's fun, you, man. man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was super cool. Right, um, but one thing I was thinking about on the way here was because, I mean, okay, we've got a major presidential candidate who wants to make all public colleges and universities tuition free. Mm-hmm. I think that there is a lot of value in that idea and putting mm-hmm. it out there, but. I don't want to promote the idea that college or even two-year technical trade schools are the end-all be-all for what it means to be educated. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, we have enormous potential now. And I I dicked around in college, Mm -hmm. you know? I was on social media constantly or playing Pokemon Go or fucking, you know, learning more from just, like, informal chats with people at the dining hall and or from engaging with people in, like, forums online. Right than I necessarily did from reading all of the textbooks that I frankly didn't read all the way through. Sure. So, hmm, I wonder, and this podcast being called Less Stupid is like my attempt to be able to say, hey, like two dickheads uh, just like shooting the shit and trying to be a little bit more intellectual than just like a typical conversation Mm -hmm. has pedagogical value it has intellectual value on Mm -hmm. some level what does pedagogical mean pedagogical has to do with um educational philosophy so like my pedagogy with teaching you know this unit on vietnam war would be you know these kids the kids are going to get start out with a 10 minute warm-up about you know talk about you know I, Try to simplify it more. I still don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just i'm i'm being loquacious. <laughs> I'm just like t- i'm just like trying to trying a little too hard. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, it's okay. Um, but I mean, you stand to me as a refutation of that because you don't have a college degree, but you're way smarter than a lot of my friends who have college <laughs> degrees. So, like, so what do you yeah, think? I mean, I I think it's no secret. I you know I'm not a major fan of 
of college. I, I really truly believe that if you're going into a trade the way that you, um, uh, uh, into a uh, trade's not the right word, into a career, into a job, into a workforce, if there's something you want to do in this life that you need a certain credential that a college can provide, mm. um, I 100% urge anybody who wants to do something like that to go to college. I think, right. unfortunately, we need doctors. I think, unfortunately, uh, college has been sold to us. And, and I really think that the trend's going the other way. I haven't looked at metrics. I'm not really big into doing that kind of stuff. I'm like <laughs> a follow my heart on how I feel kind of guy. <laughs> but, uh, but the feeling that I get is that more and more people, our generation, are, are getting starting to get disenfranchised with, with going to college as this is what I need to do to be successful. Um, and, and so doing what I do, being a property manager, yeah. I look at people's credit reports all the time. You know, yeah. you screen applications. And I see um, young people that have gone to college and uh, make not good money. Sure. It's not uncommon for them to make less than entry-level people <laughs> at this property make. And they have tens of thousands of dollars of student loan debt. Yeah. And oftentimes the job that they list on their application, and I, and this is my biggest issue with college and, 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 and people's foolishness, uh, of going because of peer pressure sure. is that they get, pressure. They, yeah, sure. They get a job that has nothing to do with <laughs> what they went to school with, mm. you know, um, uh, this is the closest thing I'll do to getting intentionally controversial. Like this would be an example hey, right here. Let's do it. If you're going to college to get a business degree <laughs> stop it <laughs> you know sure um one thing that i say in and, and, and so much of me sharing experiences it's not to be braggadocious is you know i got these properties when i was 22 years old and so uh what i know about life you know so much of what i've learned about people in the world has been from managing people here right and understanding how difficult that can be and and, and whatever right and so one of the things that i tell them and this is I'm getting super far away, but I'm going to bring it back. We talked about learning from the textbooks, right? There's no far is, away is or I, there's no close. It's a podcast. Okay. <laughs> so so, so I, I tell uh, employees, anytime I'm going to teach anybody anything, I'm going to show you once, then I'm going to watch you do it a second time, like bumpers on the bowling alley. And nice. the third time, I'm going to cut you loose. And this is what I tell them every single time, because people don't like that. People honestly believe this nonsense that like I'm a visual learner or whatever. And I say, listen, <laughs> I do not care how many hours about building a rocket ship you watch on YouTube? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take your 100 hours on YouTube versus this guy's 100 hours of trying to build a rocket and in hands-on like ability to complete the task at hand. Mm -hmm. This guy over here who's been doing it yeah. is going to bury you every single time. Yeah. And so... And it's not to say that that going and getting visual and audio and reading, like I'm, I'm huge on reading, right? Sure. For example, yeah. that's, that's value. You have read more okay, books but, than me, I, but, I but, bet. But, but, but do not be confused, okay? Doing it is, is, is there's no, here's what I'll say. I'm not going to say it's the best. There is no replacement for that. Yeah. There's no amount of reading or writing or, or, or watching video, audio. There's no amount of that that's ever going to overtake doing it. So if you I want to if, be an entrepreneur, yeah. If you want to be in the business place, you want to climb the corporate ladder, you want to go do it. Right. You don't need to go to college for that. Right. You know. Well, what about VR, man? What are, <laughs> you know, are that's, we going hey, to have the headsets uh, we put on and it's like all of a sudden I'm welding. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that is crazy, man. I've, I've played some, uh, some VR shooters. Okay. And um, uh, some of the, the minutia of, uh, you know, uh, I know you've fired a gun a couple times. Yeah. Um, for people who have never fired a weapon, you know, you would think, uh, you know, much like the BB guns or the paintballs or, or even a water gun, whatever it is you've played with as a kid, right? You point, you shoot, <laughs> you hit. That's not real. No. <laughs> you yeah. Know, you, 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 I, I tell you right now, 99 out of a hundred people, if they try to shoot, a, you know, six inch by six inch square at 10 yards away, they couldn't hit it with a pistol on their, you know, I mean, sure. it's, it's tough. It is. Right. And so, um, and I've ex like, I was like playing this VR game, right. Okay. You know, and I play video games my whole childhood. I'm a yeah. gamer, whatever. Yeah. Right. And I'm like thinking, oh, I'm going to smoke this thing. It was a pain in the ass, man. It yeah. was really tough. And I okay. thought, fuck, like you got to know how to shoot <laughs> to hit anything in this damn game. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I digress, but VR, okay. VR will be, will be, uh, 
very interesting. And I, and I, and I think that there will absolutely be a time where VR gets to a place where, um, uh, you certainly will be able to learn things. Sure. Um, and, yeah. and, 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 and have real tangible skill. Mm-hmm. Um, but VR is a scary thing too. I mean, we could go down a whole rabbit hole with that, but I, I foresee VR being, um, getting to a place in the future where, uh, you know, I think that, um, and this is a whole nother thing, but I think it's mm-hmm. getting harder and harder to justify our existence in today's society because of how easy it is to survive. Ah. And I think that there will be a point where, you We're know, there's going to be batteries like the matrix. Uh, you know, I don't think that, uh, that everybody's going to be there. There's always going to be people that love the outdoors and things of that nature, right. but you know, people are people and people are different. And, and when VR gets there, there will absolutely be a point in time. Amazon's already delivering food into people's homes. Homes, yeah, you know where there are going to be people that you know uh, whether their parents have them set up or they live off the government or whatever, and they're going to sit at home and they're going to do VR all day, every minute of every <laughs> second of every day, you know, because sure. living is tough and things happen that you don't like. Yeah, and the beautiful thing is with something like VR, you get to control the environment. Mm. You get all the good, and you don't have to have the bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So VR is a scary right. thing. I think it's fun and it's entertaining, but my heart breaks for the people that I think inevitably will end up sitting in their home every minute of every second of every day having food delivered and, and that will be their life. Right. And I think that that's sad and it's well, inevitably what's going to happen with that there, technology. There's so many places I want to go. I like, I'm interested in talking about Black Mirror because it's one of the only shows that I've actually enjoyed. Yeah. But I also just, because you brought up property managing and it's like, it's funny we went into the VR direction because it's not like the most applicable, you know, yeah, like I don't sure. think there's going to be like, uh, you know, extreme home property management. I just thought to... you were trying to troll me and I want to tell you, listen, <laughs> VR's, VR's, you can, maybe you can yeah. build a rocket by practicing yeah. on VR. I'm not, I've I'm done not teams where VR. you're like a fast food employer like a convenience store clerk but it's really? very rudimentary i mean okay. it's like i squeeze the bun and i release the bun when it's mm-hmm. on the you mm-hmm. know the patty right and it's like you know it's just it's if you squeeze the real bun that hard you're gonna fuck it up you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly don't Anyways. squeeze my buns dylan right um but yeah so like tell me more about okay because especially we've talked about um okay there are a lot of re- uh uh, activists for low income housing, affordable housing in Eugene. You know, we have got a shortage compared to people that come in. Um, one issue is that the job market doesn't seem very good in Eugene. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. it doesn't sustain people having a high wage job that matches with the price of rent. But your perspective, and part of why I wanted to get you on the show, is mm-hmm. because I think it provides a bit of a counterpoint in terms of you have basically told me that the protections for tenants mm-hmm. in Oregon mm-hmm. are relatively like very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what we're the first state in the entire country to rent control to, yeah, to yeah. implement rent control. Right. And a lot of people don't know because rent control is what sounds good. Right. Sure. But a lot of people don't know that there was a tremendous amount of uh, laws put in place to make it much, much more difficult to displace or evict tenants um, um, for cause and without cause mm. that was slid in with that legislation. But getting into the nuance of that conversation is not something that people are going to do on Facebook. Okay. So when people talk about SB 608, they talk about rent control. Yeah. Okay. Uh, rent control's here now. <laughs> We're doing rent control. Interesting. Right? But there's a tremendous amount of, of, of real valuable um, uh, in, in the eyes of the, of the tenants rights crew, right. Mm-hmm. Real valuable, um, uh, Pro- policy okay. and protection that okay. was, that was put, that was put in with that bill as well. Uh-huh. Um, it's going to slow down, uh, uh, um, it's going to slow down a, a lot, a lot of movement in terms of remodeling and uh-huh. and and improving rental properties. Um, one of the things that the bill did is it made it incredibly difficult to no cause evict somebody, which sounds awesome, um, and it is awesome, you know, mm-hmm. depending on how you look at it. But one of the things is that I you mean, know, because you're a very moral person, you're not going to do that out of some bullshit reason. But yeah. but I mean, frankly, people who are in the position that you are in mm-hmm. are not always that way i mean i i fear that you know somebody might just maybe have some kind of internal bias or they they want to hook someone else up with the property or mm-hmm, something mm-hmm. and it's just like pull pulling literally in a way pulling the rug out yeah. under under people you know i think that's a legitimate concern one thing that i want to you know make clear is i think so often with these kinds of things and we've talked a little bit about this and everybody knows but we live in such a polarized time now 
mm-hmm. right? Where you're for this or you're against it. And that's not real at all. You know, you can acknowledge. It's not. That's why I like podcasts. You can acknowledge that we're making sure our video is good. Oh, yeah. We're not doing. Don't part, acknowledge part, it on the audio. Part two on fucking Kaylee. up the flow. Oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> um, so, so uh, you know, basically, t- t- don't don't mistake me saying that it's important that 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 we get past this feeling that we have is, is to say that that feeling doesn't matter, you know. Right. But I think that um, it's 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 uh, one thing that I try to do oftentimes is I try to to um, make policy, specifically big policy. I try to make it very personal for myself, and I think mm-hmm. you know it's very easy to vote on X or Y or Z legislation when I think about the world. But what what about when I think about like how this literally affects me in my life, right? And how does that make me feel? Mm. And so you know, saying oh, it's really crummy if a landlord wants to evict somebody um, out of their home for no real reason, so that they can put somebody in there that they want. Like it's like it'd be easy for someone to say, and 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 I and I could hear that, and I could easily go, yeah, that 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 is kind of kind of crappy, right? That you could do that. Right. But I also think it's the United States of America, and if <laughs> you work really hard, and you have a property that you own, and you right. wish to, with ample notice, mind you, mm-hmm. plenty is already legally required, ninety days, ninety days, right? Okay, yeah. to to tell somebody, hey, I'm sorry, but. I'm going to have to ask you to leave because I'm Thomas and I mm-hmm. went and I went to law school and everybody mm-hmm. else went and they got degrees in, you know, I'm not going to go there. I told you I ain't trying to hurt nobody's <laughs> feelings, but degrees that we know don't make any money. Okay. And maybe they're cool in, right. in Carleton College and you could Well, a lot of the reason how, why my how, friends got those degrees is because they had in- immense amounts of security from their parents. Mm-hmm. Their parents were never going to let them fall through a, like, a financial hole in life. And so well, go ahead and get your... Let, let me let me finish you know? my thought real quick. Yeah. So, so you know... My bad. For, fortunately for you though, right, in this hypothetical situation, you're wise. And you understand that you don't want to to go to school while it may even be your passion okay okay and get a degree in i don't know feminism in 2020 you know i don't know some of these kinds of degrees that are coming up that are a little bit different and I women's don't, and gender studies okay, yeah. okay perfect like i don't i don't i don't know what kind of money's in that field i'm not okay. saying it isn't important and, and so on and so forth sure. but but maybe that's your passion but you understand that you want to make a good living and you know maybe at some point you want to have a family whatever that looks like and means to you and you want to be able to support them yeah um and 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 you want to be able to, to provide financial prosperity to your to your to your, to your family so mm-hmm. instead of doing your women's and gender studies which maybe you're incredibly passionate about sure. you go and you get a law degree mm-hmm. and instead of spending every dime of your money with that law degree which don't be confused lots mm-hmm. of people who make good money do mm-hmm. everybody wants to act like everybody who makes good money in the world just stuffs it all in their pockets and buy shit up that's fake that's not real okay okay plenty of people leverage themselves up to their eyes and have credit cards and don't have nothing right right but you don't do that you store your money away you buy a rental property mm-hmm. you buy a couple rental properties mm-hmm. so your kid gets older, he graduates, you got a, you got some people living in your rental property, and, and you want to put your kid in there. You mm-hmm. go, hey, I want to give you the opportunity to live on your own. I want to I get you, you know, on, 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 I want to give you this home for you to start your life and your family with. Right. Okay? But the government tells you, you made all these decisions to plant these seeds so that you could take care of your family in the future. Mm-hmm. Nah, those people have rights to your property. You can't kick them out. Mm-hmm. And listen, I'm not saying that that's not a tragedy, that those people are going to have to find a new place to live. But I also (laughs) believe, again, this is the United States of America. And albeit maybe for some of us, it's easier than others. There's no denying that. Some of us, and one of the things that I'll bring up with regards to privilege is that some of us are fortunate to, maybe it's not our parents, but maybe there was a coach. Yeah. Maybe there was a family friend that didn't fill your head with bullshit. (laughs) <laughs> okay. And so, and, 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 and so you had better access to good leadership in your life and, and maybe they did whatever, mm-hmm. but the point is it's 2020, there's cell phones, there's, there's, there's plenty of access to information. You made these choices. They made those choices. You sure. shouldn't be punished for that. Sure. That's well, way, way, one way the, further no, down well, that rabbit hole than I, I wanted want, to go, but no, you know. No, one of the things that I would say about, okay, it's like, okay, some people could get a law degree versus some people could get, you know, a women's and gender studies degree. It's actually not that simple of a dichotomy because 
but there aren't a lot of bachelor's degrees that get you into any kind of a high paying field anymore. Frankly, nowadays a bachelor's degree is kind of like a high school diploma, uh, like what it used to be. And well, so, I mean, I can tell so you right because, now it's because like a, a law degree, you that's seven years. You get your first four basically for bachelor's and then you do three more in law. Sure. So people, it's not like a very wise, it's not, it's not like what would be considered a typical pre law right. thing to get a women's and gender studies degree, but you could, and then go to law school and say, I want to focus on gender justice. Okay. You know? And so, but that's that, what that gets into is the fact that like, man, these colleges are rising and rising and rising in cost, the private ones, but also definitely the public ones as well. And that is, it's, it's, my dad would always say this and it's true. It's like, it's becoming a, a situation where, um, it's like designed for people who are already kind of already have access and privilege in the world mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. to be able to kind of um, Tiger Gruber's podcast guest recently said reify. I like that word reify R E I F Y. It's like he was talking about it in terms of race and I not, I don't remember his name, but um, a really cool guy, recent guest on talks with tiger um, three word, uh, full name but he was talking about reifying what a white per white white people is um uh, it's like when you continue to recreate um that as an idea right. because i right. mean white people don't exist mm -hmm. you know white people is just an idea that was you know the irish weren't considered white mm -hmm. for a long mm -hmm. period of time mm -hmm. and then right so now they, they very much are but we are always in a society that's reifying that mm -hmm. um so I don't know where. Why did I use that word in the original context? Do you remember? <laughs> uh, it's talking about, about talking, talking, talking about college and, yeah. and the rising costs and how it's essentially reifying the right. you know, probably the inequality. I'd imagine is where you're going to go. Yeah, with that. yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I don't know, man. I I don't know how <sighs> equality is just like such a such an interesting word. The 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 definitions of words are changing mm, um, in a whole lot of ways because when we came up, we all wanted equal rights. Mm -hmm. But now equal rights is not actually as progressive as like equity. equity. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and, but the way that I think about that, here's why I think that like, okay, another here's another one, racism, right? Like racism used to be the idea that like you have a prejudice against someone else based on like the color of their skin. Yes. That's um, not the case at all anymore. Right. I mean, especially, and so. And we've talked about that outside have. of this. I mean, the definition of racism has changed. Sure. Whoa. It's not yeah. what it was. You yeah. Know? And that's, it's, it's done so in such a dramatic way that, um, but maybe it hasn't. I don't fucking know. You I'm know, still rocking but, the old definition. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Yeah. But, but here's my argument for why that's kind of okay, or at least understandable from the perspective of like, let's say the activists who have been on the front lines of fighting racism from the 50s, 60s, 70s till now, mm -hmm. you got to use the most compelling argument that you can. Right. So what Dr. King was saying was, mm -hmm. I want my kids to live in a world where, you know, they won't be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I'm paraphrasing. You're going to do the Joe That's Biden? That's a really good... <laughs> hey, that was not nearly as bad. No, I was, I was hoping you would. Yeah, I was just hoping the you would. Just to troll. Women, you, yeah, you, know just, you know the thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That poor but man. But the way he said it, too, was like, you, you know the thing. I know. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> he was like, he was trying to make it sound like, ah, like... I don't know, man. Like he. God bless him. That's all I gotta say. Seventy-seven that, years yeah. old, baby. Yeah. And and tr you know. Do you think he'll run? Do you think he has enough of an anybody. ego to real to get real run for re-election at eighty-one if he's <laughs> elected? Uh, I read this phenomenal thing. A uh, um, Joe Rogan. Okay posted today uh -huh. and it was actually none of it was his thing and i am going to finish was, my thought i'm keeping it in my head about like using the most effective argument but go on about yes Joe i'm going to answer that question shortly yes yeah he absolutely would mm -hmm. anybody anybody who wants who runs for the white house and 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 does what it takes to get into the white house every single one of them even your favorite president is an absolute fucking raging egomaniac dude buddha judge is like he's like designed his whole life to try to be president yeah they're on all, some level i get it i've kind of done that too i mean mm -hmm, like i'd mm -hmm. love to be the first asian president i wanted yang to do it before me i'm not was, even eligible i was i was yeah that i wanted to see him do better than he did i i haven't followed very closely i was sad when i saw he dropped out my friend rohan Mukherjee is one of the most intellectually 
adept like political thinkers that I know. Mm -hmm. And he basically was telling me the same thing. He's like, it's sad what happened with Buttigieg in terms of like, you know, he wanted to decriminalize all drugs. That's insanely progressive. Mm -hmm. He's actually way more progressive than he's given credit for. Mm. But you happen to have this guy, Bernie Sanders, who is like, uncompromisingly hey i've been fighting for these progressive ideas for yeah. so long right. that he's the standard bearer mm -hmm. and so everybody else even elizabeth warren who's insanely progressive mm -hmm. maybe not as much on foreign policy but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's like everybody and and you know there's a people we have to contend with the fact that like there are bernie supporters who i'm really tired of them mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um but how much are you going to hate a politician based on their supporters? He's, he's denounced that kind of shit a whole yeah, lot. Right. Um, were you going to say anything about Rogan? Uh, what you, what you, you heard know, him? So basically, and I don't know this writer, some famous writer. I actually saw somebody else quote him earlier today. But he, it, it was this long quote that Joe, he's like, I just wanted to share this. I thought it was incredibly true. And, uh, and he's, and he's a real writer, you know, so just mm -hmm. beautifully descriptive with his words really paints a picture. And he was basically referring to how, um, a politician in the midst of running for the presidency and on their way to the presidency, the presidency is like a bull, like an elk, okay. um, uh, in heat and in short. And again, it's, it's worth a read just cause it's just beautiful writing, but, but, uh, you know, outside of a bull being in heat, good luck. You know, unless mm. you literally just stumble across them in 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 in, in the woods, um, good luck, uh, or or on, on crossing the road is what I meant to say. Excuse me, because you ain't gonna hear them or see them in the woods. Um, they're they're even though there's these monstrous animals, they're they're hard to track, hard to you know whatever, right? And I'm just ruining this right now. It's almost worth it to me <laughs> to pull it up on my phone and read it. But basically, when which I would allow, but when, you turn when, it off when 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 they're in heat. Um, uh, you know, a bugle or, 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 or what they might hear is, as uh, or if you do a cow call, they're literally just like reckless, abandoned, like just egomaniac psychopaths. And this is mm. real. Like they'll just dart through the woods, getting cut open by trees, just on an absolute, <laughs> just trying to get a piece of this cow. Right. Sure. And basically just their willingness to destroy anything and everything and, and all, all their senses that keep them alive, mm. right. Year round, go out the window and see to it that they end up, you know, like that on the wall over there sure. uh, because they just get just blinded by this, by this, uh, you know, in, yeah. in their case, this, this is animalistic nature. And yeah. basically what he was talking about is like on the quest of the presidency, you know, these people, they will say anything, they will do anything. There's right. absolutely nothing that's off the table. And even our favorite politicians, I mean, you see uh, people will say preposterous shit yeah. to get uh, support. Yep. And then especially when they drop out is one of the funniest things. They go right back on what they said, you know, because, and it's just that, yeah. because we just, we, there's some part of us too that we accept it, you know. To we, his credit, we, Trump has called that out. That's one of the things he doesn't like about the political system. He's <laughs> right. like, you know, he's not going to fucking endorse somebody just, well, I don't know. He probably has on some level mm -hmm. endorsed mm -hmm. people for political purposes. Right. But, you know, it's just like, he was basically said, it's like, who are these people? They say they're fighting for all these values and they immediately drop out. And then it's like, Oh, and now I'm endorsing this person who's supporting a totally almost contradictory platform. Right. It's no disrespect to anybody who supports Mike Bloomberg, but I did tell Thomas before the podcast that I, I you know, it's not my goal to make anybody feel bad, uh -huh. but I don't really like, I can't imagine any of your listeners like Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> and so, and so you just God, made them hey, tune out, man. Hold Come on. back, Bloomies. Oh, sorry. God bless you. If you, <laughs> but listen, reading Trump's tweets about Mike Bloomberg. Oh, man. I hilarious. Haven't read him. Hilarious. I he just, read him. He's just, well, he has nothing better to do. That guy tweets more times a day than I ever have in my entire life. Mm. And he just goes on and on and on about Mini Mike. Oh, and, yeah. He uh, does. He really and does. And it's just, it's just, it's good stuff. Well, the, it's good stuff. The reason why uh, I don't think anybody now is even, st well, I mean, Bloomberg's out, so there's yeah. that. But I mean, his campaign was a theoretical idea that sounded good in his own mind and mm -hmm. in the minds of a lot of people who he hired and like... Yeah, and, I was going to say, yeah, literally know, because, people that give him hand jobs because, you know, <laughs> uh, metaphorically, because like, of course you'd be a great president, Mike, because he pays their, their wage, you know, for whatever <laughs> it is that they do. Right. He either was already paying them a lot of money or they knew well, they could make a lot of money by going, oh, totally, bro, I'll be your campaign manager. What the politicos have yeah. said, and first of all, that sucks because he actually has made it a lot harder for the little guy, the little people who are running 
running running campaigns. Mm-hmm. He's starving out their opportunity to have They're driving staffers. up the cost of ads and stuff? No, oh, no, no. Purchasing the staffers, all... he's bleeding the like the actual pool of talent, people who are really good at running campaigns. Right. He just bought them up. So oh, other people are having a really hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Getting, getting that talent to work. But now maybe they'll, I don't know, but now it's late in the campaign season. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, but, but, oh my gosh, the funny thing with that, his campaign is just that, um, the, it was all predicated on the idea that, that no one else in the field was going to be able to beat Trump. And so mm-hmm. here I am and I'm going to, Mike will get it done. Yeah. And then it's like, you realize, oh, this guy was mayor of like basically a little island. I lived in New York. It's five little boroughs and had no real challengers at the debates. And no one cares that much about mayoral debates. You put the fucker on a stage. He has no ability to like actually articulate his views well. Right, right, right. And it was fascinating because he should have had those defenses on what Warren called him out on. Right. On the right. NDAs for the women who were talking about harassment. Yeah. On uh, just all sorts of stop and frisk mm-hmm. on all sorts mm-hmm. of those kind of, that kind of shit. Right. Um, and you know managerial competence is one thing but um mm-hmm. just i guess being presidential that's not something that he was able to do right um which is great because i didn't want to see him yeah I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um totally. yeah hmm, there's a lot of things we could we could get into um but we didn't wrap up the point about making the most effective argument about what racism is okay yeah and like that's my whole thing is that they couldn't have made like a hey like racism is a systemic structural level like thing they couldn't have made that argument in the 60s hmm. you know like that just that just wouldn't have flown hmm. um they were still the people that were fighting for civil rights as it was called now we call it racial justice they wouldn't have even called it racial justice then that wouldn't have worked out hmm. you know it was a messaging thing hmm. um those those people uh, who were fighting for the people who were disempowered to have more power they made that pathos argument to like you know middle class white america to say why why does your skin color make you better Mm -hmm. you know it Mm -hmm. it doesn't right um and so now however like it's a little bit biting people in the butt because now because now like i have a friend peter feliciano who runs this podcast conservative yeah and uh his thing is basically just like it's totally hypocritical. You guys used to be the people of treat everyone, uh, you know, equal right, regard- right, regardless right. Yeah, of skin yeah, yeah. color. But, um, but now it's like, it's just not, uh, yeah, they, that group of people still needs to be able to advocate for more rights. Um, but the old argument just, uh, it, it doesn't work out in the same way. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, dude. Leadership is an interesting thing. Yeah. Um, because women are great at it. Women are great at leadership. Yeah. You don't look like you agree. <laughs> I think, yeah, it was a weird segue because, for me. I think people yeah, who are enough. good, I, th- I think that people who are good at leadership are good at leadership. I just think it's leadership. about because Elizabeth Warren dropped out today. Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying that that all women are great at it. I'm not saying that okay. all anyone are great at it. Gotcha. I'm just saying I should be able to make that statement and it should not, like, I'm not blaming you, but like, I don't know, man. Why do we have this archetype still? That, you know, a loud, frankly, white guy has to be president besides mm-hmm. Obama, who had to be the most perfect example of uh, Obama was met, had to, had to meet such a high standard sure. uh, to prove his competence. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they still said he wasn't experienced enough when he ran, et cetera. Mm-hmm. It's just, um, it's interesting. And it's a bummer, I think, to see, I don't know. Do you think Warren... Um, would be able to beat Trump if she, if like somehow people Absolutely rallied around. Not. I, so, you know, and I said this in 2016, and I think we've talked about this before. I don't think anybody has a chance against Trump um, except Bernie. And mm. um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to upset anybody who's pro Bernie. I know that all the polls say that Trump loses to everybody and everything else. I just do not buy, not for one second, that anybody <laughs> now is yeah. going to beat him. I don't think there's a chance. The thing that I think that I think that um, you need awesome voter turnout. Obviously, Bernie yeah. talks a lot about that. I think with the economy doing as well as it is right now, mm-hmm. you know, I think I think well, that the, I think that there are a lot of people that may otherwise vote, and I know a lot of people are talking about how they feel down and this, that, and the other thing, and everything's terrible. 
But, and I'm not saying that this is a good or a bad thing. It's just like my, my opinion on the circumstances that, you know, if I'm upset at the world, regardless of who is president right and 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 you know there's an election cycle and some things start to change and all of a sudden i couldn't get a good job and now i get a good job or i get a job or whatever and i get a raise and you know some of these larger corporations are paying out you know we're paying out massive bonuses obviously that was all over the news when the tax bill got passed because they were trying to get rid of all that money Mm -hmm. um it's not even necessarily that I don't that I wouldn't think that a that a candidate would that a, that another candidate would potentially do a better job, but like getting me fired up enough to go and vote, you know? Yeah. I just think I just think that's tough, right? And so I'm not I'm not here to talk about whether or not Bernie deserves it or he's better or anything of this nature. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying, very matter of fact, is four years ago, mm-hmm. I think Bernie mops the floor with Trump. I have I always thought that. I agree. I think that the DNC did an awesome job a- of, you know, smashing him and uh and and getting Hillary up there and we all know how that went. And um and unfortunately, you know, despite what people are saying, there are some things that that I think that um that Trump has done that have benefited um you know, working class people in this country regardless of the color of their skin. Okay. Um, in terms of, just, and I'm strictly speaking yeah, economics. Specific? I'm not talking about. Well, I mean, I think certain things like the unemployment rate and okay. and and you know, overall, obviously, I know Yang's super against GDP, but you're looking yeah. at the stock market and and I know that I'm white and white privilege and blah 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 yeah. blah blah. But you know, yeah. little things like me, like when I look at my 401k, yeah, right, and I watch. My my stock growth, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm an average guy. I'm just a dude, much like many of the people who live in my, who work for my company that probably are maybe even you know Democrats or liberal or whatever. And you're looking at your 401k and you're watching, you know, yourself make thousands of dollars in interest because the stock market's doing well. Mm-hmm. Again, I think motivating that person to get up and vote against the current regime, if you will, mm-hmm. I just think that's a tough sell. Yeah, did you, you know? hear about the guy on CN- CNBC today? Um, I'm, I might be able to put this out tomorrow, by the way. We're recording. This. Oh, I didn't say this at the beginning. I was going to do it. This podcast was recorded on uh, March 5th? 5th, yes. 5th, 2020. Yep. Yep. Uh, oops. <laughs> yeah, I was going to start doing that at the beginning of all these. But he was saying, um, dude, the coronavirus, COVID-19 is so bad for the economy, we should just infect everybody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> legitimately said this because like the death i guess rate is not very high uh, com- you know for if you get if you get the disease we've talked a little bit about y- that you yeah. know um and so the let's just infect everybody and get it over with cuz a lot of people are going to get it anyway and then the stock market will be able to come back that's yeah interesting yeah so and then and then you got uh Trump was legitimately acting asking like uh the medical professional at like this <laughs> meeting like it's like well can we you don't think that if we just use the f- uh the flu vaccine like for a previous flu that it will he- it'll help on some level mm-hmm. and the guy was like no no Mr. President <laughs> and and he just goes you know mm-hmm. <laughs> you know he folds his arms and just kind of right. nods it's like what world are you living in where you think that a different vaccine is going to help? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Vaccines are rough because do you know who Royce to 5'9 is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the most talented rappers in terms of rhyme scheme, flow, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, has some great albums, cohesive pieces of work. Made an amazing album called The Allegory. I listened to it. I was like, this is a great fucking album. Mm-hmm. Um, then I listened closer and he's got multiple tracks saying that his son got autism from vaccines. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um I have no dog in the fight on the vax anti vax thing. Sounds like you're pretty firm on the vax team. I think that if uh professionals who are experts in the field can't find any link between autism and vaccine, uh then a random person on Google doing it doesn't particularly uh sway me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's where I'm at on that. Um yeah, man. So many things. Things are happening in the world. True story. Yeah, dude. Um, what's happening in your life, dog? Oh, uh, lots of jujitsu. Um, I got a girlfriend that's going well. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, hang out with the family when I can. Not Is it Bra- to... Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, so what uh, value does that bring to your life? Um, I think that general, uh, so there's a certain level of physical fitness that's important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I truly hate lifting weights, like with a fiery, burning <laughs> passion. And so... Um, that means that I need to find something that's incredibly active. That is also a hobby. Okay. Um, and so jujitsu was filling that need for a while. And then my brother actually pushed me really, really hard to compete. And I competed for the first time. And that was at the end of January. I did okay. So you're sparring with people? But, uh, yeah, of course. Fuck yeah. Um, uh, that went okay, but it got me really kind of fired up. Okay. And so I'm just the kind of person who needs to chase a carrot to feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when I don't have very clear goals and ambitions, I get very, very depressed. I know Um, that about you. And so uh, it's been fulfilling that need. You know, I have several competitions that I'm looking forward to. And, you know, it means that while I was already kind of, you know, I was training six days a week before I started competing, it um, adds a little bit of intensity to that training because there's something to work towards and uh, it just keeps me focused and feeling like I have some sort of purpose, you know, right on. So I think that, um, I also think it's important. I'm going to slide this in there real quick. Like people's egos in today's society are so like way out of control. I think because there's so little ramifications for anything that we do Mm. that getting the fuck beat out of you, I think is really healthy. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's just well, super I, easy to like live life and do and say whatever you want. And because of things like measure 11, like literally you could walk up and say something horribly offensive to somebody and they could fucking beat your face in, which is probably what you deserve. <laughs> and like they're punished, you know, you get better in a couple of weeks and you know, whatever. Hmm. And, and I, and I, and, and that's like a way, you know, that goes super far until, and it's another one of those things where it's like, you know, you either, you either think that the people have consequences for their actions in today's society or you don't. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to super go into that, but right. I just think that it's super, um, I think it's good to be pushed mentally and physically, you know, um, uh, having a really, really hard. So wrestling's harder than, than jujitsu, in my opinion, from a, from a cardiovascular and just physically demanding sense, sure. but grappling as a whole, you know, obviously, you know, I played football, I played basketball, I yeah. played baseball. Um, there's nothing, absolutely nothing on this earth that's as hard as a hard grappling workout, whether that be MMA or, or jujitsu or wrestling or whatever. And I think that most people, um, are never what is truly, grappling? When I think of that, I think of a grappling gra- hook and you're climbing up a wall. No, no, no. Grappling would be like a, like a, a general term for for martial arts that refer to um, uh, generally like uh, martial arts that are surrounded around uh, takedowns. So wrestling, oh, okay. sambo, judo, right? Yeah. These are all forms of Judo is the art of falling. <laughs> yeah. Is, is, that, is that what that... I believe that's what it is, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so that... Um, that kind of physical workout is very difficult. And um, I think it's kind of weird, like something that I, I it's like a, just a bizarre thing. Sometimes I just, my fucking brain explodes over the dumbest shit, you know? Mm. I think it's kind of weird that like most people, I, 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 I don't know that most people is fair, but like there's a, there's a good percentage of human beings that never play in like, think about this for a second because you've pushed yourself, right? Not like, for a while. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I but really want to lose on, weight. But you, and but, I, you, but okay. you have, okay? Mm-hmm. There's a good percentage of people out there that have never played a sport in their life. Right? Yeah. And My so, most recent ex-girlfriend of three years. And so um, you factor in uh, uh, the ability for some, and I'm going to, you know, I always got to tiptoe around because I'm not trying to have, you know, whatever, I'm insensitive or holes <laughs> blown in my argument. Oh, that, dude, it's that, an hour in. That you can, you can, have, you can have these kinds of uh, experiences where, so you're not pushed in any way physically. Sure. And then let's say maybe you get done with school and you don't get a job. And right. certainly some people end up homeless, and I totally understand that there's real adversity in that. But some people get Section 8 housing and get on food stamps and, you know, all things considered compared to, like, poverty in other countries. Like, their they're, they're essentials, their needs are met. Okay. And I'm saying all this to say that, like, there is a some 
some food stamps percentage, are pretty hard to live on month by month, but some, I feel you. Some percentage of the population that that uh, has never, not never, that very, very seldom, if at all, truly faces adversity and and understands how they behave in really, really tough times, you know? So there's like maybe somebody passing, you could argue, you know, when your mom dies, or your dad dies, there's nothing that could possibly prepare you for that. Sure. That's that's adversity, whatever. But it's just like this just like this bizarre thing that, you know, maybe you could blow a bunch of holes in my argument and say that like uh, you know, the vast majority of people that's not true or whatever, but like I think you could probably I just don't know how you, you could define probably, adversity. You could probably make the argument that like there are people out there that live their life with like minimal adversity. And for me, one thing that I try to think about is like on the darkest day, in the hardest time, when the chips are down, like what kind of person do I want to be? You know, right. do I want to be somebody that people can rely on? You know, most specifically for me as somebody who's very passionate and occasionally lets my emotions get out of control, mm -hmm. I want to be the kind of person that can be calm okay. in a stressful environment, right? Yeah. And I believe that the notion, okay, and this is something I think that people who haven't actually put the work in believe often, mm -hmm. that when the day comes the day, mm -hmm. right? That you can be who you need to be, you know? I know that I haven't been uh, training for whatever it may be, you know? I haven't been pushing myself in any way mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, but when times get tough, I'll show up. Okay. No, you won't. <laughs> No, right. you won't. It's all in the training room. And so, and, 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 but that can mean so many different things, right? Sure. It, do, it doesn't have to be physical, right? Sure. Uh, there are people out there that are incredibly stoic, and I admire that a tremendous amount. Sure. That when, that when things get difficult, when somebody disrespects them, when they have a rough day, when they get bad news, you know, there are people who are able to be solid emotionally and all those things. And then when a difficult time comes and somebody needs to make a call, mm -hmm. you know, because they're because they have practiced the mm -hmm. art of taming their emotions, they're mm -hmm. able to make a very sound decision, mm -hmm. right? And so to bring it all back down, you know, I want to be that kind of person, but I believe if you want to be the kind of person who excels in adversity, should you find yourself on the doorstep, mm -hmm. you have to do things to make you tough. Yeah. And, 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 and again, that can be different for different yeah. people. I'm not trying to pound it on this is what you have to do, yeah. but you have to get out of your comfort zone. And so many people don't do that. Yeah. And that's one of the beautiful things about, and especially I'll say this about men, um, especially men that play team sports and things of this nature. I understand there's some guys out there that probably or identify as men that this has never crossed their mind, but okay. specifically with physical altercations, okay. men do this weird thing. <laughs> Where you allow yourself to believe, and maybe not you, right? But okay. the proverbial, yeah. you allow yourself I don't to believe. As a man. I, I, yeah, I used to be. I used to be okay with it, but I always was not really okay with it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, so, um, so the quote unquote man, somebody who identifies as a sure, man, you sure. allow yourself to believe. They exist. <laughs> yeah, you allow yourself to believe that that you know, if the chips really were down, yeah, and I was in a physical altercation, and this is this is my favorite one. Mm-hmm. If I lost my temper, you like we've all like heard this like the the, the quintessential Brad who talks about when they lose their temper and it's like okay. as if the fucking world stops turning and the concrete breaks beneath their feet. Like, oh, you don't want to see me lose my temper. Or like, if X <laughs> or Y or Z happens, you know. Yeah. Well, the, the, let me tell you about this. And it's like going into a jiu-jitsu gym and sparring for your first time and having somebody you know take your back against your will and start to choke you. And then having that moment come where you decide that you're going to test that, right? We're going to lose your shit and you're going to, <laughs> and you're going to get out of there, right? And you're going to get out of there. And then you realize you can't. Right. That's an incredibly humbling experience. And okay. it does different things for different people. I'll tell you right now, um, I've quit jujitsu two separate times. Most people walk away and never come back because they can't handle it. Oh, I believe that. You know, they absolutely that. cannot handle it. You know what you it know, reminds me of? The notion that another human being been against for a while, every so I'm gonna fiber. Cut you off. <laughs> uh, no, it's cool. Uh, but like that actually reminds me of a podcast I was listening to about somebody who was talking about BDSM okay. and the the what it's called subspace when you're a, when you're submissive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you're in doing BDSM. Yeah. Um, and you know, like that's within the cons totally consensual context. And sure. I've never done any of this kind of shit mm -hmm. and use safe words, et cetera. Yep. Um, but there's like, when you're totally submitting to another person and letting them treat you how, you know, that, that 
kind of sexuality occurs, um, it's ego death. Mm. It's like a total ego right. death, right? To just get give get rid of because you said people are all very egotistical yep. nowadays. Yep. But I but I I would and I probably am, and I've been told that by a lot of people that I have a big ego. Yeah. Um. But people I think also that say I would probably entirely bad, and that's not true. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, I Go agree. Ahead. Um. But I just think that that yeah, I would be able to see a lot of value in that. Um, but I've, I've always, you know, like you've seen the way that I've been, um, like you, you, you know, you once said like with the person that I was dating, when you were dating that person who you would give the world for, you basically said that I would just like do anything for that person. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's, that's something that I was, uh, brought up to be like mm-hmm. conditioned to be like maybe within the context of my family or whatever, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, was that I was the subservient person, the people mm-hmm. who were very aggressive yep. in my house, and that yep. just wasn't me. Right. New York taught me a whole lot about standing up for myself, which I really appreciate. Sure. I could tell an anecdote about a person on the street who tried to talk shit to me, and I didn't take it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I like what you said about how if you're not in a situation that makes you tough, you might never become tough because... Mm-hmm. I mean, what are we, man? We're mm-hmm. we are just biological life forms who are adapting and surviving in our world. Right. And we evolve from single celled organisms. Right. And you're absolutely right. Like or, or even fucking our friend Andrew Moore. Like, I don't know. I'm just thinking about um He's in town. That, I was just texting. Is he? Yeah. Oh nice. Nice. Yeah. I thought about um, telling him to come over here and just hang out while we did this or hey, hop on. That'd it. be yeah. sick. Um professional ball player. Yep. Amazingly talented dude. Um, but his just, I mean, and it's so explicit with sports that you train your body to do a really specific thing. Mm -hmm. If you're a kicker, you're a pitcher, you know, a center even Mm -hmm. in football, it is, people love it because they want to see people excelling at it like no one else has done. And it's so scientific now, the level that athletes get to Right. where, and I just say, I guess I'm just trying to say that, that you're totally right in terms of we adapt and condition ourselves Mm -hmm. to live in the world that we do and you know a lot of uh, like some guy on twitter today was talking uh was replying to me because i uh i got i got bernie's notifications on my phone so bernie tweets and then i'll do something and i'll tweet something that i know his fans are going to agree with Mm. and then it'll actually get likes because no one likes my followers presumably maybe more (laughs) more with the yang folks okay the yang folks are are more insular like that okay but um, and then like people were just like, you know, cause what I said was 60% of wealth is inherited. We need to get rid of socialism for the rich. Mm. Um, and that's what I said, <laughs> you know, it's, it's Twitter. I'm kind of performing, yeah, you know, but, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. but sure, I, sure, sure. I, I, I'm sure you believe that. Yeah, I got yeah, you. exactly. Um, but people were like, oh, you sound jealous or, but another person was like, um, the, if you look at people who are really wealthy, the majority of them uh, di- didn't inherit that wealth. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking know if that's true. Right. Um, but yeah, man, like people who had, I don't know. You're right. So, so this is not a coherent point, but but no. but I guess that's just what I'm. Well, trying let to me say. say one other thing, just so that I don't sound. You know, it's not my goal to sound like this, like belligerent. You know, you have to be hard because that's not <laughs> it at all. I, I, but I really think that as a society, yeah, you as are, a, you're as a, a really sensitive fucking guy, dude. Even <laughs> though you have this way that like people, I think are it's so easy to just look at you and peg right, you, right? But you have like layers, man. Right. Um. So so I just want to articulate that. You know, as a people, as a civilization, as a as a as a, both a small society, you know, in, in terms of Eugene, as a, yeah. as a as a as a as a smaller unit, as a family, right? Um, everybody has to play their part. Yeah. And and this is just my perspective is that I think that there are plenty people right now. This mm-hmm. is my perspective. I understand we we may disagree about this. That are that are playing the part of you know being sensitive to a number of things yeah right and i truly believe that that uh you know you, 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 there just there has to be balance right there has to be yeah. some balance and i think yeah. that there are plenty of people that are embracing sensitivity and and in all its forms right mm. emotional uh you know spiritual in the day-to-day the way that we communicate and i think that you know unfortunately um, for example, and I'll be like, just like really dramatic and say like in times of war, you know, like you need people that are hard, you know, you absolutely need people that are hard, mm-hmm. you know? And so, um, 
uh, it's not, I'm not saying that, uh, that, that uh, I don't value people who are incredibly sensitive and have no desire to go into a jiu-jitsu gym and, and, and try to fortify themselves that way. Mm. Um, uh, I'm not saying that at all, but the way that I often re- think about my life in, in a literal way, because I played so many video games growing up is I think, okay, you're, you're building your character right now. Right. And you can okay. pick from any of the attributes that you want to pick. Who do you want to be? Right. Okay. Well, instead of playing that video game, go do something about it. Mm-hmm. Right. So I want to be somebody that other people can count on for strength. Definitely. I want to be somebody that people can count on for strength financially, emotionally, yeah. spiritually, yeah. literally with, with, with physical, you know, sure. should, should I ever be in a situation where I felt the need to protect myself or somebody who I care about? Yeah. And so, um, if you want to, if you want to be that, mm-hmm. you know, again, like anything else in life, you have to, you have to practice it. You have to work at it. You can't just decide and tell everybody that you're tough and then you're tough. That's not real. <laughs> you know, um, if you want to, if you want to be hard, you got to be hard. And when it gets tough, you got to keep going. Right. Total side note. I just, well, okay. This kind of reminds ahead. me a little bit of Trump because like we elect people and we, look to them to be kind of moral leaders and actually an, an example of what a, what leadership looks like. And I want to talk about, you know, this idea of being hard and being tough because there are, frankly, I probably don't talk to a lot of people who are, want to have discussions about the current president. Okay. You know, um, do you think he's tough or do you think he's insecure? Cause those things are pretty opposite of one another. Mm-hmm. And I think there are like, you could, throw out 20 examples for either one yeah so 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 there's a dichotomy there right i mean so what i would say is and i'm gonna just i always like to try to explain to people why i feel what i feel beforehand so like i'll use discipline as an example okay there are plenty of people that are incredibly disciplined in one area of their life and incredibly undisciplined in another right um so for example there are people that are in phenomenal shape right they get up every day at 4 30 and they got six packs and they're bodybuilders and you come to their house and it's like a they like live like a slob right (laughs) um and so there's nuance there yeah um i would say that in some ways trump is incredibly tough i would say in a lot of ways it's also unbelievably apparent that he's incredibly insecure (laughs) right i mean that's like it's not very easy to upset him um, but when you look at things like... You mean it is easy or... Uh, I'm sorry. I yeah. didn't mean... To, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. easy to upset yeah, yeah. him. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. So it's it's obviously incredibly easy to upset him and yeah. ruffle his feathers and bother yeah. him. Um, you know, he's got to be one of the easiest guys in the world to troll, you know. <laughs> um, but I think that you look at certain things and like, here's something that comes to mind. And you might think it's terrible, right? But I'm just going to use this as an example. Think about negotiating. Oh, it's terrible. Think, think, think about negotiating this trade deal or what he's trying to do with China. Okay. And the amount of backlash that he's taken, you know, okay. over, over this time as he's tried to negotiate this mm-hmm. and holding firm on it. Mm-hmm. And it's not just people outside of his constituency that are criticizing him, right? Mm-hmm. You got middle America farmers that are upset by some of the decisions that are being made to stand in the face of all that adversity right, right. And, and hold fast because he generally believes right, wrong, or indifferent, this is what's going to be good for us. That's incredibly tough. That's okay. really, really hard to do, hmm. right? Um, uh, you know, having that much criticism over anything and just bearing that burden for an extended period of time, like that's, that's difficult, right? Mm. Um, and, and, and to not cave or wilt mm. to that social pressure. That's, it's very, that, it's very clear that he has had a lifelong training in that kind of thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from his dad, oh, Fred, who was a, a serious hard ass, mm-hmm. um, and just living in New York where mm-hmm. that attitude is what people, you know, incul- are inculcated in. Right. Um, yeah. I, so, I mean, in, 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 in some ways, I would certainly say yes. That's just my perspective and opinion. And, mm-hmm. but I also think it's, you know, it's incredibly apparent that, uh, um, you know, in other ways, he's 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 incredibly insecure. Mm-hmm. I have this side note that like didn't really tie well, into I think, what I was saying. Sure, go. I, oh, I just wanted to share this quote for anybody who ever's listened to Jocko Willing's podcast. Uh-huh. I was just you know, I was talking about being hard. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because people think about wanting to be tough, right? And and or or wanting to 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 pursue meaning in their life. And and the way Jordan Peterson puts it is, you want to pursue meaning in your life, find the biggest burden that you can bear and bear it willingly. 
right? That's something by that Jordan, cleaning your room. That, <laughs> that's very <laughs> funny. That Jordan Peterson talks about. And so uh, Jocko's very first podcast, he's got this guy Echo Charles on there, and Echo's, okay. Echo's a badass too. But okay, he, Echo goes like this. It's so funny because I've I've been here where you're on the edge of your seat and you're looking for the secret right? To mm-hmm. whether it be being successful or being hard or whatever. And just for anybody who's listening to this, I just want to share this with them. Jocko, mm-hmm. Navy SEAL, 20 years, wakes up at 4.30 in the morning every single deal, day, built several successful businesses, led the most successful Navy SEAL platoon uh, wow. in, in the Iraq war, like very, very decorated. And he is polished. I've heard I mean, the name. He, he does it the way you're supposed to do it, right? He's clean cut. He's, you know, like I said, 4.30 every day, no matter what, he's working out, whatever. He's a hard ass, right? Okay. Black belt in jiu-jitsu, like super okay. just Brad, like, uh, be tough guy, right? Right. And Echo goes, so Jocko, what if you're like, what if you're not you? Uh-huh. And what if you're like a regular guy and you're trying to get on the path, right? And you're doing burpees. This is a serious thing. It's her first ever podcast. And Echo <laughs> goes, and you're doing burpees and you're exhausted, and you feel like you can't keep going anymore. And Echo's like, but you're not you. Like, you wouldn't just endure, you know? Like, what's your advice for those people? And Jocko laughs, and he goes, just keep going. (laughs) Right. And it's so funny because we want it to be more complicated than that. Right. It reminds me of a comedian who was talking about how hard it is to quit cigarettes. You know how you quit cigarettes? You stop putting them in your mouth and lighting them. Yeah. Yeah. and it's I well, mean, people want it to I've be more than that. I've never been addicted to cigarettes, though. So I, yeah, but I, I just, people want it to be more than that. And it's just not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like one of Couple my favorite things. quotes ever. Well, I, I, for no, it's cool. It's that. cool. No, it's not at all. Um, I, I think we both just like, uh, have so many ideas and it's like, and they just keep going and going mm-hmm. and going. So I don't know how easy it is to listen to, but I think people who know us are probably entertained. Sure. Um, here's my thing about like toughness. And Trump, it's like, okay, I don't know how you can call someone, because I actually agree with you on some level Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about he certainly projects what he believes it is to be tough. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, if you're going to just lie about things that are proven or statistical, numerical, like his first thing was just lying about the size of his inauguration, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. there's such a dishonesty there where I, I would just think, I would think it's way way more indicative of you know true toughness to be like hey yeah let's let's be honest about Mm. the fact that i didn't have as many people at my inauguration Mm. as obama or like here's one that i just heard on the radio on the way here because i have xm radio um i was reading earlier today about like okay what was the you know deal that hunter biden got with burisma in ukraine Mm. right so Mm. in terms of like okay he was getting 50k a month $50,000 a month to sit on this board where he didn't have previous experience in that field. Um, But Trump was just saying that he got a hundred and I want to say either 138 or $168,000 a month. Big difference between that and Mm 50,000, you know, Mm -hmm. but he was saying it at a town hall um, hosted by Fox news Mm -hmm. where zero fact checking and everyone's just going to applaud. Sure. You know, it's like, I don't know how I deal with this. Um, and that's actually, a, you know, if I'm going to critique podcasts, which I critique everything, mm-hmm. that's, uh, I've always been like, okay, it's cool that I can make this and I can put it on in my car and it sounds a lot like any other podcast, but I'm not as qualified as other people. <laughs> and the mm-hmm. people that I bring on are not experts, but if people hear it, it just, there's some level of authority to it mm-hmm. um, because it's just, you know, it's also streaming on their podcast app next mm-hmm. to the New York Times and NPR politics and right. Jocko, whatever the fuck, Willink. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I We do it for the lonely people, dog. That's what my podcasting is, is all about. That, it's like, a- I like to have, I like to have some shit on. Because I spent a lot of time alone, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it feels it, it's like you can feel like you're a part of a conversation, and you can learn a lot. Yeah. Um, but it's not. I don't know. It's. I like that it's long form too. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, if I was ever successful, yeah, I'd probably do ads, but I'd rather do them on the front of the show. And yeah. Just let it, let it go naturally. Right. right. You you push back against some things that your guests say that you don't agree with or whatever, and so I'm gonna. I got one like when you, when you when you talk about not being qualified, it's just like something that I just seriously take an issue with. Okay, because this 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 notion of like qualification, 
and like so often the way that people like to cite experts and things of this nature. It's just such a bizarre thing to me because it's like, I don't want to say it's all made up in the sense that like there aren't people that are Well, what about science? Hold on. Okay. I don't want to say that there's not in the sense that there are people that are more, um, uh, you know, clearly more knowledgeable in something than than another person. Mm -hmm. But way too often those ideas and and uh the words surrounding qualification i think stop people from doing a lot of things that they shouldn't you know you just you, like you shouldn't sure. worry about that you know no matter how no matter how awesome whoever it is that's the super expert okay guess what they started at some point yeah not qualified yeah. Because there's nobody ever who just walked it. Like we just talked about, about, you know, you want to try to be tough, whatever. That goes for everything in life. Okay. You spend some time in the training room. Yeah. You put out some podcasts that were fucking garbage. <laughs> Your favorite whoever journalist on broadcast TV, guess what? At some point, they sucked yeah. on the local news network. Yeah. And they weren't qualified. Yeah. So. Fair. You know, I just don't like when people get hung up on that as a means of not doing something. Dylan yeah. Hudson, ladies and gentlemen, and people outside the binary, uh, taking a stance against experts. That's not expected. <laughs> I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. It's just it's like totally context dependent. Yeah. You know? Um, can I tell you about the person who like just thought she could just like talk shit to me on the street and I didn't I wasn't okay with it? Of course. Um, I was working at my hotel downtown. Uh oh, this was here. I don't know why I thought this was in New York when this happened. Yeah, no, this was like this was literally yesterday. Sick. Um, and yeah, you know, it's okay. So people who are in downtown Eugene, there's just a whole host of different kinds of characters and folks. Sure. And you've got a lot of people in Eugene who basically say they don't even want to go to downtown. They certainly don't want to bring their kids there. Um, and that is, yeah, I'm not into downtown. <laughs> right. Um, and so, but I could tell that this person was, um, you know, there's just like a, there's a spectrum of like, okay, some people are rambly and they're talking nonsense and they're sitting on the street, you okay. know, sure. and they probably are, they're just like, they're alone. And so they kind of like, that's how they cope with the world or they experience schizophrenia or whatever it may be. And, um, are you just rolling out being drug addicts. I just thought it was funny. You didn't mention that. Dude, I don't know, man. Like. It's 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 such a hard thing to paint with a broad brush. You okay. know what I mean? Sure. You know what I mean? We're not hating on drug addicts on less stupid. Got it. <laughs> uh, I mean, what is drug addiction, man? What is addiction? Like, I see that's one of my favorite. It's a real questions. thing. That's one of my favorite questions in the world. Yeah, because we don't fucking know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So anyway. I guess, I, I guess, okay, I don't want to make it sound like I don't believe addiction exists because I want people to have freedom from, you know, substance abuse problems that ruin their families. And, you know, if you have a fucking kid, you got to take care of your kid. Yeah. Um, don't let me shit on your story. Tell me about this. Later. All right. So she's just like, okay, I'm sitting behind the hotel on one of these kind of like bench areas and I'm on my phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm on my work shift, but I'm but I'm checking up on my phone, and I'm back there because I and I have a spray bottle and a rag. I'm clearly working, and uh, so I'm on my phone scrolling, and so she's like a solid forty feet away, mm -hmm. walking down the alley between the Holt Center and the hotel, mm -hmm. and she's just like kind of talking aloud, um, but but I would say that she she looks like she's kind of got athletic clothes on. She doesn't, she looks like she has showered within the last day or two. Okay. So she's not the typical mold for somebody who I would think would just be rambling at people on the street. Yeah. Um, and she, she's like, if you're going to read, you should learn to practice reading, not on the phone. <laughs> and she's like, so that's the part that I catch when she's kind of talking aloud. She's looking at me. So you should practice reading not on the phone if you're going to read. And I was like, okay, let me, let me engage this person in dialogue. So she keeps walking and I, and I sort of walk around because I can't go straight to her because the way that like the stairs work, she's walking forward and I can't come up behind and go up. So I come around mm -hmm. and I see her. And um, so she's pretty toothless. And so that's that that probably I don't know meth I don't know man, mm -hmm. um, but she gets all offended. She gets all offended that I came up to her and clarified. And you know that I approached her in like a very Thomas way in terms of just like, hey, so I don't think it was cool for you to criticize what I was doing because it didn't affect you in any way. 
and uh, her her thing her, her thing was basically like people are all on their phones now it's terrible and uh and but she just like she got she's so mad because she doesn't have one she got <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> but she got so offended and she was like, she started like violently threatening me. She's like, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. Like, how dare you come over? You came over to me. I'm right. like, well, I was doing something that didn't affect you at all whatsoever. She was not willing to have a conversation about it at all. And it See, was just and- like, it was fascinating. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She so, so it ended with her being all devastated at me and me just saying, hey, look, uh, I... I'm a literate person and I can read a, you know, it just doesn't make sense for you to think that you criticizing me is okay. And she's like, you know, I meant it as a, I meant it like a compliment. I was just talking to you. And so I don't know, man, it was, it was a very Eugene moment. Mm -hmm. And that's where that was at. I forgot what I was going to say. You know what I was going to, a different thing that I was going to say I've been holding on to is it's funny. Earlier you said that you have a hard time with your attention span sometimes, just like trying to absorb content. And I just, I I was going to say, but we digressed even while we were talking in the kitchen before the podcast, I was going to respond at some point and say, I have the same issue. Sure. So like even with things that I'm passionate about, whatever content that I'm absorbing, you know, it'll be very difficult for me to, I'll turn on a YouTube video about something that I love, Mm -hmm. right? Whatever it may be. a political topic I'm passionate mm-hmm. about, uh, a hobby of mine, jujitsu, wrestling. Mm-hmm. And within five minutes, I'll have opened my phone to a news article about mm-hmm. something else that I'm passionate about. You know what right. I mean? But it's and still it, on. Yeah, but it's, yeah. And and so, and uh, I just think that's such a, um, I don't know the right word, but is that not what's going on in this conversation? It's just so yeah. funny that oh, we yeah, both man. just, just. I mean, I mean. But I love it. Like you said, anybody like who knows us, it's, it's, it's. My friend Tiger Show, I mean, he. Um, and we'll probably do this again and we'll, we'll, maybe we'll have a topic or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'll want to go into that and like try to have topics or like ideas for questions to like keep things on track, mm-hmm. but I just don't know that that is needed. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. So, um, but you know, Tiger's doing that now with like, his, he had a, he has questions like, was the U S founded on white supremacy? It's like, Oh, that's an interesting title. And I click on that mm-hmm. and, uh, he doesn't really think it was, I think that's absurd. I think it totally was. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, um, do you ever do a thing where it's like you go back 30 seconds because you're like, oh, what was that point? I missed that point. Mm-hmm. But then you miss it again. So you go back and you do it like five or six fucking times. Oh, yeah. And it's like, damn, why point, would I that not was have 30 minutes ago in the conversation and you're just still trying to revisit it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. Well, it's just like I used to um, back when I was like having a when I was smoking a lot of weed Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was, it was contributing to mania and Mm. it was making me feel like everything is really significant. All my thoughts are really significant and like there's some kind of message in everything. Wow. Um, and it was, it was, yeah. So I basically stopped. Uh, I did stop. Um, but the thing about it, why was I getting there? It was, it was like, um, yeah, I don't remember what my point was with that. That's a bummer. Um, oh, rhythm studies. That's what it was. I would okay. talk to my friends and I would say, like, I think rhythm studies should be an academic discipline but that, like, is understood outside of just the context of music. Okay. Right? Because, you know, the rhythm of, I don't know, on a large scale, we have a leap year every four years. That's weird. Okay. Or just um, the biological rhythms that are at play. And, you know, why do I like video games? Mm -hmm. You know, I keep Mm -hmm. failing this level, but I keep going back and it becomes like a cyclical thing and it's enjoyable. Um, But like, you know, ADHD symptoms are getting more diagnosed and they're very linked to smartphone use. But it's because of the way that like we are able to like the speed at which we can digest information now. Right, right, Like, remember when, you know, MySpace was a thing and it would just take forever to load a web page. Right. What were you doing in that time? I don't remember what I was doing in that time. I I think I was just sitting there and waiting for it to load. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I certainly wouldn't have picked up my smartphone and opened it new, which is what I do now. But now if something is going to take 30 seconds, oh, this file to copy every 30 seconds, oh, of course I'm going to use that 30 seconds to To check the two most recent Instagram posts that I haven't seen. Right. You know? Right. I don't know. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. Yeah. There's just immense potential to learn, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, that's one of the, like, people try to hate on tech. I think that... Um, the amount of opportunity 
It's obviously something I brought up a couple of times, the amount of opportunity that there is because of the access to information that there is. Um, it is, it is a beautiful thing. I also think that, you know, and, and Simon Sinek talks about this, you know, uh, I'm not proposing by any means that it should be it, it should be regulated, but smartphones are so interesting in that, it, it, relatively speaking, right? Um, they're still very new. You know, this yeah. us having this sort of access to information as a society is very very new to us. iPhone came and out in 2007, and we don't know um, what kind of long term effects. effects <laughs> you know, we don't know what kind of long term effects it has. And no so, idea. you know, Simon Sinek brought it up. Basically, it's like, imagine just, you know, opening up the liquor cabinet to a five year old, you know, yeah. because we didn't have this, but the kids that came shortly thereafter, I mean, I promise you, if you and I went to an elementary school tomorrow, mm-hmm. 80% of the third graders have cell phones. It's amazing. Smartphones, yes. mind you. Right. Yeah. And uh, and I don't and know so, how like good said, parental good controls can be. Because well, no. if someone we, we sends you an I image mean, on Messenger or IG d- DMs, there's just nothing to prevent that from being any image—a violent image, a mm-hmm. porn image. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's it's very it's super bizarre. I personally, I'm not a big. But fan. you're not opposed. You're kind of saying like you're not really an anti-tech person. No. Um. But like all things, so like, granted, I've been coming back to it more in the last probably month than I have in a long time, but I deleted mm-hmm. all social media applications off my phone in January of last year. I think it's good to do that once um, in a while. Uh, and I at have least. not reinstalled them at all. Nice. Um, occasionally I'll log in on, a, on the browser and generally will search very specific things. So mm-hmm. I will go to a specific person's Instagram page um, if it's a jujitsu person that I like, uh, yeah. uh, specifically if they're insightful and I'll read their posts and then generally I'll close out. Or if there's a, some sort of event going on, I mean, it's a shame because I think that there's so much on Twitter that's not good, but, uh, <laughs> but I truly believe in terms of right now news, Twitter's as good as it gets. I mean, just in terms of information, I don't know that it's news is the right word, how quick but it is. it is unbelievable how quickly you can get solid information on Twitter. Um, yeah. And so if I want to know about something right now, I want to mm-hmm. know what's happening right this second. Uh, I don't want to see the box score. You know, I want the live feed. Sure. I might hop on Twitter. And, sure. And, and uh, if there's something big happening, whatever yeah. that might be, um, yeah. you know, check the pundits, if you will, their two cents and just try to get enough information um, to formulate an opinion. Honestly, the God's honest truth is though, especially with regards to politics, I got myself so worked up the last election cycle that I've completely unplugged from that stuff. And I very, very deliberately do not absorb any of that content because right. I just, for me, this isn't a, a people sure. opinion. For me, I don't, I don't, I don't see the ROI there. It's not there for me. Okay. Um, Fair. But I mean, that's neither here nor there. I well, I, I think as long as... In sh- Tech for kids, though, yeah. the, the, and not not specifically the games. Yeah, the amount of games, I, I think it's terrible. Personally. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think I think I think uh, younger generations, and I'm somebody who's shy, and you know this, obviously. And sure. I've gotten over that through the workplace and having to be a grown up. Uh-huh. But um, the 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 people's ability to interact is getting worse every day in in, yeah. in person you know obviously people are obviously uh plenty good at making uh, yeah, friends I online feel it. with complete physically strangers, i but, feel it when i'm with people but, yeah and it's a situation where i can't pull out my phone and i've been talking with someone for 20 minutes mm-hmm. at that point i i'm always able to kind of typically bat it down especially mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. like you know i'm having a real conversation that's interesting like sure. you and i right now yeah, absolutely um but that's like just maturity i you know. yeah but i but i do feel it and mm-hmm. i feel this extra part of my mind yep. that is happening simultaneously with me listening to you and that means that i'm not really listening to you right or like okay a distracted driving is a fucking problem mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's a real problem because people think they're multitasking but multitasking when you're driving is not paying attention to two things at the same time. Right. It's flitting back and forth yeah, yeah. very instantaneously. Right. And I've probably done it a lot, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I had to, uh, and, it, and it doesn't even stop me all the time, but I take advantage of the setting on the Apple phones where it makes it so that you don't receive any notifications while you drive. And I actually nice. have to click, I'm not driving to unlock my phone. That's cool. Um, and sometimes I'll 
push past it anyways. Because I didn't know I'm there was person, that. You know, and I'm flawed, but sure. Uh, but it helps a lot. Or maybe you get something that's time sensitive. Not receiving notifications. Um, you know, so basically I do have to go out of my way to distract myself instead of sure. having ping and then, you know, somebody else kind of pulls me out, if you will, or something else. Yeah. Um, and then, but it's just like all their settings, you know, the, the bedtime, whatever, where it makes us, you don't get, if someone like serial calls you, it's either the second or the third one, it pushes yeah. us through in the event that it's an emergency. Yeah. Um, which is super clever and awesome. Right. Right. Well, uh, we're get, we're getting we're at an hour and 35 minutes and so pretty soon i want to ask you what's one way to be less stupid okay but we're kind of already having a little bit of a conversation about that but one of the things that i um think is just like i have to unsubscribe to emails Mm -hmm. like if i just get so many fucking emails Mm -hmm. that it buries the actual shit that's important Mm -hmm. and that's one of the big challenges with but it's with anything man with with um voicemails or with phone calls right. it's just annoying that it all comes to the same place and it all looks the same and i've missed things that are like incredibly important before right because it's buried amidst for me it's like politicians who are asking for money and that's mm. annoying yeah but i kind of want to know what they're saying in their emails because mm. it matters like on some or you know it's like that's me trying to be an informed person about these people and how they're running their campaigns and what messages they're emphasizing. But it's like, man, like I I was on a date with someone in New York and she just didn't have any email notifications, but there's a big trade off there because then she's got to be obsessed with checking it. Mm. I don't know. I don't know, man. I think we're, I think it's pretty easy to be in our generation, except for the climate change shit that that's very frustrating and, and worrisome. Um, I don't know what you think about that, Mm -hmm. but like we have it pretty damn easy, but that we're all accustomed to and pressured to be a part of these networks that, you know, one of the biggest things that worries me if we're talking about youth is that, um, there's just a number now that objectively quantifies how popular you are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Instagram is, they're talking about taking out likes, which I think is great. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Yeah. But that kind of shit, like if if you're, I mean, middle school girls in particular, but really just young people across the board, mm-hmm. we're already fucking mad and secure about their place in the world, right? You know. Well, I think that like with commercialization and and uh, I'm gonna make this point. There's something else I want to say. Sure. So so much of of uh, you know businesses growing. Um, you know, is predicated obviously on getting people to buy this stuff over and over again. And if you look at the vast majority of products that are on the market, um, I'd, I'd make, I'm sure if someone did the research, which of course I'm not willing to, the, the, the number of products that are quite literally essential to our survival, Mm. right, is dangerously close to none. I'm sure it's probably Mm. 1% or or, or less than, than, than like products that are consumer on the market, right? Like even things like you say like, well, soap. It's like, you don't need soap to live though, right? You know what I'm saying? So like you you can make an argument there. So what I'm saying is that, right, that that so much of of, uh, getting us to indulge in these things, these networks, you know, as you refer to them, is, is preying on... Uh, you know, certain chemicals in our brain and, and, and essentially, you know, addiction, right? The, the reason why you want to check your phone is a form of an addi- a, dopamine a, of, of, of slot addiction. machine. Yeah, of addiction. And so for me, I have a really weird thing with addiction. I don't like the idea of being addicted to literally anything. And that's not to say that I'm not by okay. any means. But um, for me, like, I just think that I, I like the idea of having a sound enough mind to be able to feel at the very least like I'm in control. Sure. You know, and so um, uh, I I try to be very mindful about indulging in those kinds of things. It's why I deleted those apps off my phone. You know, I stopped drinking caffeine a while ago. Dude, caffeine uh, is I, basically because psychoactive. I felt, because I felt super guilty about the fact that I would talk mess to certain people that struggled with certain things, uh-huh. um, knowing that I drank, you know, four bangs a day and five Damn. cups of coffee. I mean, like I was like really, really bad. Yeah. And, uh, and so I stopped doing that. And that's not to say I'm like better than anybody again. So much of like my, 
my beliefs. One thing I just want to disclaimer is like a lot of the shit that I believe, I really believe is for me. I don't think it's for everybody. And I right. could give a fuck less if like anybody else you. subscribed. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. This is, this is my thing. Yeah. You know, like I don't, I, I don't wear t-shirts or clothes that fucking have logos on them unless it's a business <laughs> that someone I know owns. This is my Are brother's tattoo shit? shop. What? No, I exa- only, exactly wear, I not, only right? wear shit with this. Yeah, yeah so no know. graphic tees. Yeah. I'm not saying everybody should do that. I'm not yeah. saying you're corny if you do them. I feel fucking weird <laughs> when I put somebody else's logo on me. Like, well, I, I think, think it's weird, weird. people wear Do- Taco Bell and Dr. Pepper you know? and buy them at fucking, you know, the department store or Walmart. But one thing I, I wanted to do, odd. just in case you care to go there, I felt kind of bad. Um, I'll go anywhere. One of the things that I actually know a little bit about, obviously, is the rental housing market. And Mm -hmm. it's maybe a little bit different perspective than a lot of the other people we've had on the show. Yeah. We talked about it for five seconds. We did. We did. That's actually kind of a bummer. We should get into it. I wanted to give you the opportunity, any specific questions you wanted to ask, to try to... Just yeah. stay on topic for you there. And if you want to revisit it, it, you know, maybe do another one more pointedly for it. I'm I'm down for whatever, but I just wanted to give you that opportunity. I, I just can't believe we to... never hit gentrification. We talked about it before we started rolling, yeah. but yeah. but we absolutely could have because um, gentrification in my perspective is a problem for communities. And like let me make let me make the case for a moment. Okay. Mm-hmm. We talk about it in terms of you know racial communities who have who have been oppressed and mm-hmm. still are mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. um you've got people who uh, let's say like okay i lived by harlem and so you got a, a city that needs the community of people who live in harlem it's predominantly african-american who do jobs that that are you know are service jobs or you know i don't want to be even too you know paint with too broad a brush because they, they do all sorts of different things right but you know being creating a neighborhood where that's where you lived and it wasn't the most desirable place to live. Um, but then you've got the Apollo theater that goes up. You've got Sylvia's, which is an amazing soul food restaurant that everyone wants to visit. You've got these community centers and churches and places that become very important for that community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they get priced out by people who are outsiders and and people who have more money that want to live in New York City and there's just not that much room in New York City. <laughs> no, there is not. Yes, there is not. Uh, people live in tiny fucking rooms, tiny rooms with a lot of their relatives. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why it's like here in Eugene, it's like, can you imagine how much money you'd be paying Anywhere in Manhattan, oh, even yeah. way up on 160th oh, yeah. Street, right. you know, for this much space. Well, and Which, how about, I, I mean, I think about all the it. times, like, you know, I bring up again how fortunate we are, not just in this country, but even literally, like, you know, even mm-hmm. more condensed than that is like, how about the fact that people just have fucking acreage? Yeah. You know? How wild is that? Yeah. You know, like yeah. people have acreage. Just well, I think, crazy I, thing. you know, but one of the predictions I made anyway, for the sorry, 2020s with music. No, it's okay. okay. I just wanted to say is that rural rap, I think, is going to be a big thing. You know, Kanye made a great video for Follow God in Wyoming. That and was, it, bro, that video was sick. Dope as shit. It is thank so you. With his dad. Sick. And oh, the, man. Oh, it was my incredible. God. Yes. Thank you. incredible. And it's like, yeah, let's, let's have uh, stories from the African-American community that are not just in the fucking same mm-hmm. places that you expect them to mm-hmm. be at. Trump always talks about the inner cities. Right. Like it's the same goddamn thing as the black community. It's like, what? Right. Um, and so, um, but, but with gentrification, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, people in Eugene, I mentioned to you was like, it's not just with uh, communities of color, but like the Whitaker mm-hmm. being a place mm-hmm. where it's very culturally significant for counterculture and the hippie movement. And now, you know, people can't afford to live in Eugene anymore. But your take on it, and I'll let you go and explain it, is like it's good. It's generally good for places to become nicer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So gentrification, gentrification is a bad one, though. I mean, it's not. It's not something that I that I um, would go into great uh, detail in because I don't. You know, I don't really understand the argument against it. Like to be frank, that's one of the things I kind of mentioned. In short, though. Um, specifically let's go like on, uh, with regards to housing and housing affordability. Okay. Right? I'll just, I'll just try to keep it in that vein. Okay. Um, ultimately the way that you drive down the cost of anything is you make more of it available easier period. Like people want to make it to be more complicated than that. But the reason why this iPhone, this beautiful piece of technology that I have, the 10, right. Sure. Is not worth a lot of money is cause what fucking three of them have come out since then. Yeah. 
Is that right? Three? I think so. And it's, I don't know. I, and it's, I don't know. I don't know how many years Pro old. Max not, or some shit. Not old. You know, with this, yeah, is, no, the, this is like the first one that came out. Does with it have the, two cameras I on I think it? they like jumped the nine right. or something. It was like the eight and then the 10 came out at the same yeah, time. Yeah, they didn't want to do nine. This is that one. Yeah. So I, you know what I mean? It's like old, right? Yeah. But it's, but it's worth, I don't want to say nothing because it's, you know, it's like this right. is one of the things that we throw around like is, you know. Just, I still have wait, a six we, we, S. We, we, we just take for granted so often how, how fortunate we are. That's a that's a that's an awesome piece of technology. It's yeah. not worth a lot of money solely because of the market being flooded all mm. the time mm. with nicer, better stuff. Okay. Okay. And so, with regards to housing, mm-hmm. it is no different. It's happening on a slower if, scale because it costs but, a lot to but, build and. You know. Yeah, but so what I'm saying is that if you want the cost of housing to go down, nice housing, right? Mm-hmm. Nice phone. Okay. You have to make newer, nicer housing more readily available, right? Okay. But there are things about our system and the way that it works that make it very, 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 very difficult to develop. Yeah. And so guess what happens if this was the last cell phone that was ever made? It's worth $2 billion. It's worth a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And the screen's cracked, still mm-hmm. worth a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And the web browser barely works, mm-hmm. still worth a lot of money. So what happens when you live in a community where the people who are in charge of that, the real estate of Eugene, mm-hmm. make it difficult to develop, mm-hmm. right? There's no competition. And the landlord who lets their screen get broken... And lets their web browser stop working. Which in this equivalent that, would be like people pouring grease in the sink or something, and it makes it... No. Specifically what I'm referring worse. to is they don't do maintenance on their properties, right? People that we... And we go, oh, this fucking right. bastard charges me $1,500 a month for this bedroom. and this. Why, why do they do that? More specifically, why do they get away with it? Because of a lack of competition. Sure. The way that you stop that from happening, this is one thing that I have a hard time with, is that at the end of the day value is assigned the greater responsibility of value is assigned by the purchaser meaning i can have a baseball card and i can say that it's worth a million dollars all day long but it's only worth a million dollars if somebody will give me a million dollars for that okay if there is newer nicer housing more readily available Mm -hmm. people will not pay top dollar for worse housing sure period right and now there gets to a certain point where, where uh, you know, you reach a point where it's not realistic for there to be no regulation and things of that nature. That's never going to happen, whatever, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so, so how do we continue to improve the quality of the housing in our community? And we personalize these things. We go, what about the families? And I understand that. But, but we don't want to have dilapidated homes in our communities because I care about these people too. And I don't want them to live in places that the electrical's outdated and out of code and not safe. And there's plumbing leaks everywhere because it's copper from 1890, <laughs> right? And so you can't develop new housing. So what do these people want to do? Mm-hmm. They want to renovate what's old mm-hmm. to bring up. On the whole, and I understand some people will suffer Mm -hmm. the quality of life for the members of that community, right? And and presumably the counter argument is it's not really for the members of that community because they're flushing those people out, right? Right. But, um, I mean, something's there. There are. I think. I think that you know that goes back to where. You know, I, I I think that there are families that are that are in places that are gentrifying, and they and they yeah. probably identify that. And there are some people that leave willingly because they realize they ain't trying to be a part of that. Mm. And there are some people that realize they better get ahead of the curve if they want to be able to continue to afford housing in that community, and they do mm-hmm. the things that are necessary. And there are some people that sit idly by. God bless them. I ain't saying they're guilty or bad people or that they deserve to what they got coming to them. But there are some people that sit by in communities that are progressively getting more and more expensive and not pursuing good career opportunities or whatever, not doing any things to try to, to try to grow their lives with the rate that which housing and et cetera. And then they get priced out. And it's like, I'm not saying I don't feel bad, but it's just, it's, it's tough. You know, these things, these things are very tough. Eugene's a great example, right? Mm. Somebody who gets priced out of Eugene, I leased two bedroom, one baths, at this apartment complex for eight hundred and five dollars. Wow. In two thousand and fourteen. That's low. Yes, it is. 
They rent for over 12 all day long now. Yeah, absolutely. That happened over five years. Yes, it did. Okay. So when you live here and you're talking about how your housing is eating up a larger and larger and larger portion of your, of your income, it didn't happen overnight. Sure. It's not happening overnight. But and there are, and a lot there, of it's because of Californians. And well, and that's... Californians, say, international that, that's, students. That's, 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 and that's, that's, that's where things get a little bit complicated. And, and, and um, You've seen you this know, greater where, Idaho where shit? I would... Hold on. Where, yeah. where I would... I don't want to say push back on that by any means, but sure. it's just one of the... It, 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 it's funny to me sometimes. I'll go way back early on into this conversation where mm-hmm. I try to think about how things personally apply to me, mm. right? And I don't even want to use the borders as an example because that's so controversial and I'm not necessarily pro or against anything there. Okay. But this idea of like, you know, let's try to be a community and let's all try to work together and let's bring everybody in and da 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 right? But then it hits home here mm-hmm. where people from California are moving here and they sold their piece of fucking dog shit house in who cares where for a million dollars. And this happens right here in this apartment complex. Okay. And they'll come here and they'll pay seventeen hundred fucking dollars for my three bedroom that nobody who ever lived in your in Eugene their whole life would ever pay for a yeah, three bedroom what, here. What job is funding someone to have that kind of monthly income? I don't, nothing. I don't know. Nothing. Exactly. That's why Eugene. This is a fucking fugazi. Okay. I'm here to tell you right now. The idea that Eugene is flourishing and growing not real. Yeah. Okay. Portland. You look at things like Intel and Amazon. The cost of, inc- sure. of of living, Nike, is increasing dramatically in Portland. Isn't Amazon there in also, Seattle area? I think they have some stuff going on. Forgive okay. me if that's wrong. Sure. I know Intel. I'll go ahead and say Intel sure. is fucking massive. I think their average salary is like dangerously close to $100,000 a year. So their average, their median employee income. I don't even know if that's the right. Is it median? Whatever. That's the middle of the line. <laughs> middle of the fucking right, road right, for them. Right. Okay. So, so Portland has forget Joe the plumber. It's Joe the software developer. So, so Portland has hardware corporations that are sustaining yes uh, the 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 cost of living increase, if you will, mm-hmm. in in Portland, making it viable. Yeah. Eugene's a ticking time bomb yeah. because the cost of, of 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 living in Eugene, and I've been saying this since this started happening, mind you, mm-hmm. the cost of living in Eugene is going through the moon. Because all yeah. these people that want, all the Californians that want to move to Portland, that can't quite afford it, mm-hmm. settle in Eugene, and they sell their house, and they have ungodly amounts of money. They way overpay for our real estate, whether it be in the rental market or in the housing market, where they're offered $30,000 more than a house is listed for. Because again, when I made 800 Gs on my house in California, there was a three-bedroom, two-bath in some regular suburban I you were community. About you for a second. No, no, no. In some regular <laughs> suburban community, and I can get a bitchin' house in Eugene with land for 300 Like, I'll offer it 330 pfft, Wipe my ass. It's nothing to me. $30,000 more than the asking price just because I sold my house for eight hundred grand in California. It don't matter EUG, to me. the airport is expanding, so you could even bop down there pretty quickly and easily, too. You know? And so... Uh, you know, yeah, pe- pe- people people coming from out of town and out of state is, is a very real problem. And in, in, in Eugene, um, the only thing that Eugene really has going for it is that I don't think that I think that that uh, I think that the 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 I, I don't think that we'll suffer terribly because I think a lot of the people that are in positions to make decisions know this. And so what you don't see is a lot of new businesses popping up everywhere. And yeah. so and so I would be worried if I thought that one day our rents were going to like this would be I would be worried about my job security, mm-hmm. okay? If my company was foolish and started making all this money and went fuck yeah, we're upgrading. We're putting granite countertops in our units, right? Okay. And we're going to spend Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on on upgrades. Hopefully, this doesn't go over too many people's heads, right? No, it's and so great. I, and, and so, what happens is you spend all this money on upgrades, and you have a, a, a return on investment schedule, okay. right? You need to see that money all come back to you in X amount of years, or you just flushed it all down the toilet. Mm-hmm. So you buy all that, you put all this stuff in your property under this fugazi, this this belief that oh, we're gonna get two thousand dollars a month in Eugene. But again, there's no corporate growth here. Okay. So these Californians come and they pay for two grand. And what happens when the Californians can't pay jobs to sustain that rent mm-hmm. after they lost all the, all their savings from their from their house they sold down there? 
they fucking leave. Yeah. And I don't know where they're going. Truthfully, I think a lot of people are actually some people. Some people are moving back to California, but sure. they leave. So what happens to your company? They leverage themselves all the way up to their eyes mm -hmm. and took out massive loans, and now they have to rent these properties for fifteen hundred bucks. Sure, you know that they're supposed to be getting two thousand for the books to balance out, and then I fucking lose my job. Mm. You know that's where shit gets really bad. I'm yeah, not just seeing the, that. I, here. I don't see a logical I'm not, I'm not, point of where it comes I'm, down. I'm, it I'm just not, keeps I'm going not, up. I'm not seeing that here. The only way, the only way that you drive it down, and obviously you hear conservative people talk about this all the time. Okay, is you Competition. get is you get, and and this is why regulations come up all the time. People okay. want to make it to where it's like it's about slitting throats. Let me just tell you something really quick, okay. specifically with the rental housing industry. I can't speak to manufacturing plants. Okay, sure. and then I want to ask you about short term rentals, Airbnb, and shit. Okay, the notion. Like we'll talk about no cause eviction. Oh, these people are getting no cause eviction. It's so heartless. And da, da, da. Do you honestly think that massive rental companies, billion dollar corporations that have tremendous assets to be lost, should they ever do anything unethical and be sued, are illegally evicting people? Or do you think it's fucking Billy who doesn't know <laughs> shit, nothing about, about landlord tenant law that okay. saved up his money and bought his three bed, two bath with his savings and he had a tenant in there for a while and then evicted him. Because we'll insert reason here, mm -hmm. right? Like most of the, I don't want to say most, I don't want to use these kinds of terms, but a lot of the shitty things that happens to tenants by landlords, uh -huh. it's not by Graystar. <laughs> okay. It's, it's Billy the homeowner. It's, it's okay. I, I got three houses or this is my duplex. Like I said, I don't know anything about, about you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, rental housing laws, like security deposits. Security deposits always come up. Again, okay. if you're a billion dollar corporation, do you think that you want to spend, that these people want to spend literal money because they just absolutely rape and pillage everybody for their security deposit, hiring people to answer the phone and fight with these people and go to small claims courts all the time? Like who do you think's more likely to rape you for your security deposit? The people that are super duper duper cash fat I and, mean, and 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 have real assets to lose. I think should they're both things, problems. You should know, things, I don't, should I don't, things go bad, or do you think it's the guy who literally struggles to pay his bills and has this rental property and could really use your security deposit? He's probably month? a little more desperate to do that, but I just think that it's happening in both of those situations. Is it not? I mean, Eric Trump walked into a fast food place and put lemonade in a water cup. You know, there's some kind of a mentality where, you know, some people even fucking think greed is good. I'm not a fucking unfettered capitalist mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's an, that's an attitude where they're trying to make as much money as possible. And it's sometimes it's to, to, sure. to uh, I, 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 satisfy so, their investors. Yeah. So... I'm not going mean, to say they anything. got billions when you, of dollars listen, when, they, you, when, you, they when, got you, when you talk about investors, I'm not going to say anything about publicly owned and traded companies because okay. shit does get really weird with regards to the things that people are willing to do to make money and make it look like they make money mm. because, you know, literally just like made up, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like positive morale is essentially okay. what grows your company more than anything else, mm -hmm. you know? And so you'll do anything to make the numbers look good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Customer satisfaction, you know, lawsuits, none of that matters. You're not even playing the game with your own money. You're playing the game with made up money from the, from the market value of your company. You know what I'm saying? It sure. just changes things versus, you know, again, I'm Bob and I'm a, I'm a, you know, I own Bob's property management and we have 300 employees. Mm -hmm. And yes, I, I, I am a multimillionaire or maybe a billionaire, but if we get sued, I'm getting sued. Okay. This isn't a publicly traded company, mm -hmm. right? So, so with publicly traded companies, I'd be more likely to 100% agree with what you just said. Okay. But my experience with the company that I work for, mm -hmm. it's worth billions of dollars. We own every pro almost every single property that we manage. We mm -hmm. have hundreds of employees. Is that we're not trying to get sued. Mm. There's way too much to lose, right? And I've and I've seen sure. it and I've heard it. The, the, I just the, think, the kinds dude, of people and, and, and some of it, some of it, listen, check me out. Some of it's even, and I keep trying to bring this up. It's, it's, it's not even necessarily malintent as like the ignorance that you have okay. when you're a tiny property management company and you can't pay somebody a $60,000 a year salary to comb through every single new piece of landlord tenant legislation that comes across the table. Okay. Right. Like you, you ain't got the time or money. No. So laws change and you do mm -hmm. illegal bullshit just cause you don't know better. Right. 
I think this. But sec- I don't. But I don't want to. I don't. I don't. I don't, don't want to get super digressed. What I was trying to say was the investment needs to make sense. Eugene's going to be fine. I don't think people are over investing in this market. I don't think that jobs are going to go away. I don't think anything's going to happen. Like when Monaco went under, literally thousands of people in the city lost their job. Mm. Um, I do think it's all made up. You know, it's made up prosperity ba- b- created by people from California and other places in the country that are moving here because they believe Oregon's amazing, mm-hmm. and they get here and they spend all kinds of money. And then what happens is they run out of their savings and they realize that there's no economy here to to justify the amount, uh, the, the cost of living that they've burdened themselves with. Yeah. And so I think that they, they, they leave. Um, sure. But again, in order to regulation, that's where I got off. Okay. That, that, that's where I got off the cuff. I'm not saying that regulation is bad uh, or, 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 or is good or bad, but you have to understand that when you overly regulate things, you make it difficult to start... Uh, to start businesses, to create movement, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And, and while some bad things do come, right, undoubtedly, from, from uh, uh, poorly regulated businesses, mm-hmm. um, one positive is that the less regulation you have, the more competition you have. And here's something. Let me get away from real estate. I know I've been talking for a while. That's very easy. That's cool. So let's so let's talk contractors, right? Lots okay. of people are are willing and able to, uh, you know, hang a piece of drywall and texture it and paint it, etc. Right. right? Um, those kinds of labor generally cost anywhere from fifty to seventy five dollars an hour, depending on how skilled the person is. Yeah. Okay. A big part of that is that you might go work for a construction company tomorrow and make $18 an hour and you might really want to go out and get on your own. But $18 an hour isn't a lot of money. It's hard to save money when you make $18 an hour. Yeah. And the amount of fine, not fine, excuse me, fees that you have to pay to the state to legally start a business and get insured and become knowledgeable and then go out and try to be productive on your own, it creates a large barrier of entry. Sure. And a large barrier of entry does what? It's frustrating to me. It stifles competition. Yes, it does. And it makes it very easy for the big outfits, right? Because fuck corporations. It makes it very easy for them to charge a premium because the little guy can't come. They can't even come in and undercut him. Not legally. No. They can't. No. You know, they can't come in and go, fuck, man. You know, it's worth it to me to get this business off the ground. I'm going to charge $35 an hour to hang drywall. (laughs) Because first of all, if they're doing that, uh, uh, chances are by the time they pay all the fees and the insurance, it's not, you know, the cost of private insurance. Not like it's literally they, they can't, they can't afford sure. to cause that little. And so that's where you know, not necessarily pro gentrification, but just understanding that the way that we're going to drive housing costs down is to do a number. It's, it's, it's to do these two things. Okay. It's to improve what we have and it's to build new. Okay. Right. And so yep. uh, the more easy we can make it. There was a New York to... Times article that the headline was the word build 12 times, I think. Build, 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 build. Oh, like, really? This is fucking clickbait as hell. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, but it's, uh, you know, and I'm really sorry I went on that tangent. I told you I didn't Don't want be, to do man. Like I'm gl- that. I but just it, wish it, that we had done it on minute 15 yeah, instead of. Because no one's going to hear I'm going to put Literally it in a link, nobody. though, for real, because you're the pro- you're Dylan Hudson, comma, property manager. You know, and, um, I'll, and I'll jump straight to it. But it, but, but it, you know, and, and, and people and, be and, like, and for, did and Thomas any, even talk in this episode? <laughs> for anybody who, who thinks what I'm saying is nonsense, like I just beg you because I think it's important that people get behind this, this, these ideas about, about regulation, specifically when it comes to housing. Okay. Just think about the cell phone. Mm-hmm. This is a very nice cell phone and it's not worth a lot of money because massive amounts of competition have flooded the market since this released, sure. since this was released. And if that were not the case, this would still be a premium. And when we do not create new, nicer housing, older, shittier housing with poorer maintenance is billed to people at a premium. Mm. If I want our apartments to go down because I think these are nice, uh, you know, middle class, just true blue middle class apartments. If I want the cost of these to go down because I want to know that, you know, I feel good about the value that I provide to our tenants here. Mm -hmm. I'm not begging for government regulation or intervention. I'm praying to God that another new, nicer, better complex goes up. And the reason why is that in Eugene, Oregon, at least right now, because we talked about the job market, you're never going to get $2,000 a month for a one bedroom. 
Not right now. Wouldn't matter if you put gold-plated floors in it. Who own, Who who makes enough money to pay two thousand dollars for a one bedroom in Eugene? And South they, they, Hills, man. A, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Just stay with me, okay? Yeah. Stay with me. So what happens when they build that nice new one bedroom? They're gonna try to keystone the market, and they're gonna realize, shit, man, we can't get we can't get two thousand. We can't even get fifteen. We might get thirteen fifty for this. Right. Well, guess what happens to my one bedroom that I was previously charging twelve fifty for? I can't move it to save my life. My shit's 20 years old in here that I'm showing people. Yeah. And they're going to go, wait a minute, I can pay $100 more a month and I get granite? Mm-hmm. I get stainless steel? Uh-huh. I get brand new cabinets? Uh-huh. So now what happens to our to our, our one bedrooms? Now they're 1150 Now they're 1100 Yeah. Right? And, and, and truthfully, okay. because I care about my tenants, yeah. I, I, I want to see that happen. Yeah. But, but regulation, making it difficult to build, making it difficult to... On some of these older, older homes where major renovation is required, yeah, making it very difficult to remove people from those homes so that you can get in there and do that renovation. Mm-hmm. You know, plumbing and electrical in some of these homes that were built in the '80s and '90s. That's yeah, like, you can't do that with someone occupying that space. A lot of that and stuff that's down, not it. necessarily downtown, but just a little bit west of downtown. Mm-hmm. Before you get to Chambers, a mm-hmm. lot of that stuff seems like it's very out, like. Out, not state of the art at all mm-hmm. anymore, man. You right. go to where these college kids are hanging out, and it's just like it's decrepit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I really am going to close on this. But as far as what I want to say about this, but it's yeah, like, I would love, you know, and we have to, we have to, we have to be practical about solving these kinds of things. Yes. And listen, I would love to say, you know, what we should do? We shouldn't just displace these people. We should hypothetically give a land, give a landlord an opportunity to, or we should give, make some sort of legislation where if you're going to no cause somebody, instead you have to give them an opportunity to pay the higher rent, and if they choose to to take your unit for the for the higher rent that you want, you have your goal, your post renovation number. If they're willing to pay it, then they move out and you renovate it, and they move right back in. And you gotta since they're gonna pay your new rent, you gotta pay for their housing in the interim. Like that sounds cool. I don't even but, think that but, sounds that cool. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, like th- these kinds of ideas, maybe that's not the one for you, sure. right? These these kinds of ideas that come up that are super pro pro tenant ultimately. Okay, you know, nobody's ever gonna do that. No landlord in the like that that bill could get passed tomorrow, and you know what would happen? Here's how I'll bring it back to why rate. You know what mm-hmm. happened? No one would ever would renovate follow? one of those old bu- old buildings ever again. Okay. Huh. You know, you yeah. know about New York and some of the people that are living in buildings that were rent controlled that are, you know, have some rent that's absurdly low and they, they'll never leave no matter what. Like they just, right. they just stay in there forever because they know as soon as anything happens, like they, they'll never be able to find housing sure. uh, in New York that's comparable to that. But also what else is true about that housing? It's like, you're talking like ceilings caving in and active yeah. leaks in it because the, 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 if it's not literally, uh, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, uninhabitable, you know, legally yeah. deemed uninhabitable. That landlord is absolutely not going to do that maintenance because they cannot recoup the cost. Mm-hmm. That barrier has been put in place, you know, by the legislators in that community. Right. And so they they literally wait for it to become uninhabitable. So it's just going to get worse. Yeah, and then sometimes people will live in homes that are uninhabitable, and 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 this is tr- a tragedy. They'll live in fucking squalor. Mm. Because again, the legislation that's been put excuse me, because yeah. again the legislation that's been put in place, they would rather live in 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 in, in just just living conditions that, that you or I don't believe that anybody should live in. Sure. Uh then then have to move because they know that they can't they can't afford they you know, they can't af- they can't afford anything in in, in even Queens, you know, or right. whatever, whatever the, 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 the rougher boroughs are. Bronx you know? is yeah. the, the Bronx, you know. E- even with what what's out there that they can't afford it, so I'm going to mm. live in this place that literally has a, a, a roof leaking dog. mold all over the ceiling because I I, I can't afford to leave. You I know? had I was so privileged, man, and that's why I, I'm thinking about going back and trying to finish my degree from Columbia because uh, even though I was miserable in a whole lot of ways, mm-hmm. frankly, um, was that like I would would walk out of my apartment building for about eight or nine minutes to get to Junzi Kitchen where I was making $15 minimum wage serving up noodle bowls mm-hmm. and got a shift meal. Mm-hmm. I, didn't get, I didn't get a shift meal at Chiba Hut, man. Right. Um, I mean, people, people took them, yeah. but, but uh, you know, we weren't supposed to, you yeah. know? And so, so I, that was a, that was a solid ass fucking gig. Yeah. And, uh, 
yeah, so me walking there eight minutes and being like the only half white person practically, there's one mm-hmm. other white person who works there and just about everyone else is people of color, mostly black and la- uh, Latino, Hispanic. Mm-hmm. They're taking the train an hour and 20 minutes to get to work. Wow. An hour and 20 minutes since 275 right. top on the MTA from way up in the Bronx. Right. And they're just like, and they're, you know, frankly, I, that's where, that was my first, uh, when I was smoking weed a lot and I wish I hadn't frankly, mm-hmm. but, uh, first weed hookup was a guy who was just like fucking hustling weed to make it, to make it also, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like rough. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. And that, that was, it's crazy, man. And uh, New York is just I'm an empath. So when I see people struggling mm-hmm. and I see people living on the street and stuff, it's mm-hmm. just like, I don't walk by that and just not be affected. Sure. So. Well, I mean, tech is, tech is such a perfect example of the point that I'm trying to prove. I just keep trying to, you know, this is, no, this it's is, a really, this is I, something that I've I'm, never that heard I'm, it that this way. This is something that I am passionate enough about that I'll try to change hearts and minds about. Cause I do care about affordable housing, There we go. but I do think that we need to fucking quit with the nonsense that we're talking about fixing the issue. Hmm. And, and, and is, is, can, can we agree that especially maybe more so now, but in the last 10 or 20 years, tech is very new. We've already, we've already agreed on that. Sure. How much regulation can there possibly be for something that's brand new mm, there ain't a whole much. lot there's not a whole lot of legislation around around tech and governing no. tech and how they use our information our data and what's happened look at yeah, how dude. fastly a it random has fucking guy named andrew yang i mean he's a smart guy business mm-hmm. guy mm-hmm. venture for america uh but yeah he was able to capitalize and build a build one of the biggest grass moots bruce political movement just because he had some literacy on this issue yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and some and and you look at the the amount of money that that many people new money right like we talked about wealth and how it's handed down you know yeah. tech yeah. new money that it's made people you look at the jobs obviously tech jobs are, are incredibly high paying um, um, compared to, to being a janitor or, or most jobs out there, you know, yeah. if you're a software engineer or something at Google, you're not, you're doing okay. You yes, know? you are. Um, a lot of my friends from college, boy, and, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and you look at the difference between this industry and a lot of industries is that there has been, you know, this is, I don't want to say this is America at its finest and say anything silly like that, but this is, this is what, and I, this, this is what can happen, mm. right? This is what can happen. And there's been some cons for sure, right? But when you think about the amount of money that, 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 that regular people are making that, mm. that, you know, from, from these corporations and, and they're able to do those kinds of things and they're able to pay that kind of money because they were able to grow incredibly rapidly. And, blah, blah, and part of one of the reasons for the growth is that, you know, again, there's a lack of regulation. It's highly competitive, you know, instead of creating a new, a new phone, and I'm not saying they don't do this, but just hear me out. Instead of creating a new phone and thinking, this is how much we're going to sell this thing for. They have to go, how much can we sell this thing for? Cause mm. ours is going to be the hottest on the market for today, but tomorrow Samsung, Nokia, you know, who they all got HTC. a new hot one. H, they all got a new hot one coming out too. Yep, yep. So, so where can we put this price at? Cause we can't just set it. You know, no. we got, we got to move these things. And if we get too greedy, they're going to come right underneath us, yep. you know, and they're able to be highly competitive because there isn't all these restrictions governing how it is that they operate. Right. You know, so. Right. Anyways. Fuck yeah, man. Well, let me ask you about STR short-term rentals because then I'll lead and I'll lead into it. Okay. It's because, um, there is a perception, especially from one city councilor. We've got eight city councilors in Eugene. Mm-hmm. Betty Taylor, she's in her 90s. I think she's 96. Mm. And she has been, uh, she shattered the record for uh, longest tenure on the Eugene City Council. Cool. Bless her heart. Yeah, she's good the kind her. of person who was considered very progressive back in the day. And she's pretty much stayed the same person as she is. But I think she's been on that for like 26 years. That okay. could be totally wrong. And now she's seen as the second most conservative person. It's, wow. it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but she's deeply concerned about. Um, Airbnb uh, and and what the what it's doing to the availability of housing that I mean in her view and in many people's view that should be for Eugenians mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know um, but one issue is that people um, it's makes more money mm-hmm. you charge much higher for people to, to do that yep um, per day of course mm-hmm. um, and then uh, there's a lot of people who don't want to deal with tenants man. Because yeah. tenants can be a pain in the fucking ass. No, they can be entitled. Can. They can yep. be all sorts of things. Um, and so 
you know, one of the things that they were going to do. And they, they basically pushed this, they kicked it down the road and said, we're going to create a committee okay. and the committee's going to examine this. And there's going to have housing advocates and STR owners uh, mm. because, because frankly, um, when they decided they were going to try to introduce these regulations, all those people who rent out Airbnbs rised up and went to the meetings and gave like 30 public comments. And it's just like, whoa, big pushback. Wow. You know, um, because one of the things they were going to do, they were going to trim it from 365 days a year. You could do it to 90. Like, how is that going to work? You know, that to me sounds very, what? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, and, and the, the, the most conservative guy, his name is Mike Clark, big free market advocate. You know, mm-hmm. he's like, what, what role does the government have in, in how, re- how did he even get on the board? There's a conservative guy on the board. I'm not even trying There's to be funny. Boards is there, is there like a, he represents the Sheldon area. Okay. Sheldon. Oh, Cal Young. Well that, okay. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> cool. Yep. And then Betty Taylor who's the second most conservative is the South Hills. Yeah. Right. So of course, and, and it's like, they, they're kind of like the, I mean, they're liberal, but yeah, they're, but they're conservative. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. right, right. <laughs> yeah. So that's them. So with that, I mean, this is probably going to be super annoying and anybody who is listening is going to hate this, but you know, I, they already hate you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's a free, Just kidding. It's, 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 it's a free country, man. And, and do you want to know what I think about that? I think that the, I think that the STRs, is that the, the term? Mm-hmm. I think that the STRs are, are bad for everything that I was just saying. Um, uh, you there are know, some your, cities have been hit really hard. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're taking away exactly from, from housing for long-term Eugene people. And by doing that, you're driving down competition, right? Mm. You're, you're, you're making less housing available for people who want to be here long-term and you're creating, um, some sort of premium product for people to make money on and, and, and outsiders essentially to benefit from, um, you know, none of the money that's, that, that's made on, I don't want to say none of those. So one of the things I've noticed with these, with these STRs is, is that a lot of it is done um, a lot of people who my experience has been in, in bigger cities staying in Airbnbs. Sure. I don't think that there are locals that own them. I think that is such a just just a business is blowing up right now that mm. people are, you know, if I'm in Jacksonville right now and I make three hundred thousand dollars a year, which can't get me a whole lot in Jacksonville c- can comparative comparatively speaking. Sure. I might go, you know what, Eugene's a pretty uh pop in town because of the trials and things of that nature. Yeah. And housing is infinitely more affordable there. Yeah. So I'm gonna buy some houses in eugene and turn them into airbnbs yeah um i think that happens a lot so none of that money is, is staying in our and is staying in our economy um yeah. but it's a free country man and i really believe that that the government has no place um telling people how they can or cannot use properties that they uh you know paid for fair and square that they earned with you know money that 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 they purchase with money that they spend. I just, I don't it believe... It changes the nature of what a I neighborhood is. I don't believe in in uh, making those, those, those kinds of decisions via the government. Mm-hmm. I hope, and this is one thing that I think that a lot of people are... Um, a lot of people don't respect the authority that we as the purchasers of the product have over the business. It's something that frustrates me a tremendous amount that so often we look to the government to solve these problems as if we as a group do not ultimately drive them. Okay, A business's number one uh, goal is to be profitable, right? right? I mean, we can agree small or big, that's the goal, right? You're, 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 you start your business to make money, unless, of course, it's a nonprofit or something of that I nature. I want a hip-hop ramen shop um, just because I fucking want a hip-hop ramen right. shop to happen, but I get you. Right. Um, so I'm saying that to say that, like, and I'm going to use a super just easy example, you know, but if you're, if you're uh, a business owner, um, we could say, we could say that, uh, you know, the government should... Um, intervene and not let anybody own a business who's um, homophobic. And that would definitely um, encourage a certain kind of behavior from our business owners, right? Um, And this is a bad example, by the way, because I think the government government intervention is like actually something that I'm not pro, but but, uh, 
I guess I am pro with regards to social justice type stuff. Cool. So this is a terrible example, actually. But I'm homophobes everywhere. But hold on. But I'm gonna make the point nonetheless. You know, the other way that you could the other way that you could incentivize that behavior mm-hmm. is newsflash. Do you think that this guy is gonna have his his uh um sign on his front door that says no homos allowed after two weeks straight of absolutely zero customers <laughs> and you know he can't pay his mortgage next month and he realizes that he's about to, this this person whomever is about to file for bankruptcy no i mean right. they're, they're they're either gonna they're either gonna tear the sticker down or they're gonna get what they get coming to them right, right? and so um there are certain things that absolutely are real problems but we as people can solve them, nice. you know, by doing things like one thing that I hate that that we as people do, and I'm, I'm going to use the hate word, is like we slander these massive corporations, and guess where ninety nine percent of people are doing their shopping the next time they open their phone, Amazon, Amazon, and listen, I'm not anti rich guy, but let me just tell you, hey man, we grew up in my household going to Walmart. I think Jeff Bezos is a fucking dirtbag. Newsflash, people. Amazon is now, but for a long time, or they're right up there, for a long time, they were not even close to started out to selling being, books. To being How the profitable most, is that? To, to being the most valuable business in the world, right? So, so bear with me. So not even yeah. close to being the biggest business in the world, yet the richest man in the world owns this business. I pulled out a prime Steve, a long time Steve, ago. I'm, Steve, I'm thrilled Steve, that I did. Steve Jobs... When he died, his net worth was $11 billion. Only $11 billion? $11 billion, 10 of which, and this may be off just a hair, wow. was from Pixar. Really? Or, or, or whichever, whichever uh, one of the animating studios that he owned. When he came back to Apple, he paid himself a dollar a year, 50, 50 cents to show up, and 50 cents is a performance bonus. Hmm. He's got a phenomenal biography by Walter Isaacson. It's one of the greatest books I've ever read. Hmm. He I haven't died even his, seen the Ashton net, Kutcher movie. Net, and his net worth was $11 billion. And so to bring it back, right, you have guys out there that are real life bad guys, that mm. have businesses that don't make a ton of money, and they fucking take every penny of it, Jeff Bezos. Mm. And we all talk shit about it. And then we go, government, save our problems, fi- fix our problems. Right. How about stop fucking buying stuff off Amazon? Hey. Because what incentive, what, what, how, how are we incentivizing this man to change? We're not. Absolutely. And you can oh, fucking you, pick at your sign all you I want. And you can vote for whatever candidate you want. 152. But as long as you're putting Karen money Johnson. in that motherfucker's pocket, he, they will not change. Damn right. Because That's... they care about profit. And if you're putting money in their pocket... You if, vote if with I your can, feet, if I with can, your put, eyes, and with your dollar. If I can put my no homo sign on my store and still, and you're still going to come in, I'm yeah. flying my flag. Right. You stop coming in, I'm going to make a change. Right. Right? Hey, and for me, man, I mean... And so we want to fucking have our cake and eat it. We want to do whatever the fuck we want yeah. and, then, and then go, hey, government, fix this. Yeah. That's nonsense. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, I get that, and, man. And, 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 and we're very, very, very... Com- it's like everybody's so I mean, so I have an electric car nowadays. because I because I literally was looking at the fossil fuel industry and was just like, I cannot live with continually going and, and putting, I truly, putting a big chunk of money in these And I truly admire that hands. about you. Right, I mean... Because that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. If you have a fucking problem, I don't give a shit about what flag you're flying or what... Fa- show me what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> and if you're doing something... Maybe I'll follow you. Maybe I might respect you. Maybe, but if you're going to, oh, fuck the corporations. Hey, dude, uh, you know, Walmart's got the bitch and sales on Black Friday. Let's mm. go pick up a team. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Seriously, you're not helping. You're really not. Mm. You're really not. I'm, the next one for so, me is Wells Fargo. I want to pull out of it when I can. And uh, just like the fast food, man, that's where I spent a lot of my money too. But it's like, I spent a lot, but it's not a lot because it's the fucking like right, $1 right. taco. Yeah. It's like, God damn, like yeah. I can't get that anywhere else. Right. Um, and you know, I live in my car. So mm-hmm. like once I get a place, you know, I'll be fucking, I'll go to Winko and, and actually ball out mm-hmm. and, and eat and fucking heat shit up in the microwave at least. But yeah, dude, I go to Taco Bell way more than I wish. Yeah. <laughs> What's one way we could all be less stupid, dude? Man. <laughs> Am I allowed to have a minute? Yeah, dude. I'll, uh, I'll pretend there's an ad. Um, while Dylan is thinking about one way we could all be less stupid, I want to promote this cup. This is a cup that says home sweet home. No, I, I'm not very good at improv comedy. That's a bummer. 
I think that you already slaughtered it in terms of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so all I'd say about being less stupid is I just, I really think that um, it's healthy for people to understand kind of what I said earlier, just that like so much of what we believe is is so circumstantial. And if you can understand that, I think that it makes it very easy to understand what other people believe and truly yeah. understand it and listen to it and receive it, right? Is because by by understanding what I'm asking that we understand that you what you know you know, isn't based off what you know. It's mm. so circumstantial. It makes it so much easier to hear somebody else's viewpoint and really respect it because you understand that what you know isn't, it's not what you know. Right. You know, it's very circumstantial. Sure. And uh, ultimately, and everybody says this all the time, it's such a cliche, but it's so true. It's like, we just need dialogue. Yes. You know, I, I pray to God that that we continue to work towards a situation where anybody who thinks that anything that I said here is awful would not slander me in a YouTube comment, but would fucking meet me at <laughs> no cafe comments on my videos and yet. we could, and we could, and we could have a conversation. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's one way for us. To Those are both stupid. really good answers. And, uh, what's one, one thing that is circumstantial is that, uh, when we created the, uh, fertility festival slideshow in 11th grade, uh, Miss Kunz, the substitute teacher, uh, didn't she? I don't think she failed us on it, but she gave she, us a C. She gave us a C. There's not a whole lot of things that I harbor hate about, but I swear <laughs> to you, brother, it makes me fucking mad to this day. It was devastating. You want to talk about fucking injustice? Seriously, okay. So our our subject, we were studying Japanese, like a Japanese unit in eleventh mm-hmm. grade literature. While we had a long term sub, was uh, Japanese festivals. So we went through. Yeah. We did Obon Festival. Hold, hold we did on, New on. Year. So so the unit was on culture, and everybody okay. had to present on specific oh, aspects right. of culture. And you and I got festivals. Oh, okay. Okay, that's what that's it was. Important to note, I think. All right, fair enough. And so we wanted to do something that we knew would go over well. And would be a very legitimate multicultural. This was an international high school that we mm-hmm. were in, mm-hmm. recognizing that hey, our ideas about sexuality, our ideas about uh, what is what is considered appropriate, are culturally bounded, and they're very different across mm-hmm. different nations. So we explained all these more conventional festivals, and then we ended with a fertility yeah. festival, right. and we end it was a lot of like, for example, giant wooden penises being yeah. paraded around in the street, and like penis lollipops, and, and it, these are slides on our slideshow that are yep. being shown in front of the entire 11th grade class. Yep. Mind you, and I'm sure a lot of people, I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if anybody listens to this that was in that classroom today, they'll hit us up and be like, I remember that. Yeah. Because it was pedagogically, like I said, I'm thinking about doing a word of the episode if okay. I'm really trying to do okay. it. So pedagogy, pedagogy, look it up, P-E-D-A-G-O-G-Y. It was sound. It was pedagogically sound. Yep. It was well done. But Miss Kunz circumstantially mm-hmm. believed that we wouldn't have done it if Miss Skurlock was there. Miss Skurlock is, is that the, what, is that what she told you? Yeah. All, the only thing that I remember was was Miss Skurlock was a Christian. Was and that she was, she, was, she told me and it was enraging to me because <laughs> I trusted you and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't you're, like you're Japanese, right? Half Japanese, half Japanese. Okay, yeah. so so I feel like you're an authority. Is that even a question. I feel like well, I just want to. I just like I'm no, like super cool. paranoid about cool. you know no, mislabeling people in today's society. I'm like, what if yeah. you're fucking Chinese and I had it wrong? I just wanted to ask me. Fair, okay. So um, I don't want to be insensitive. So, uh, <laughs> and I can't remember if you were there or if I asked her separately. But you know, I asked her what the fuck because um, <laughs> you know we had like a, we no we had interact we 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 had we asked questions at the end so mm-hmm. we were interactive yeah and so much of the class did awesome and I remember people like laughing and joking and telling us afterwards over there like yo like that was solid like I actually knew like you we yes. were engaged yes obviously I think especially at that age we were a little bit better as far as orators go you know in the public sense than maybe your average bear so right. don't be confused you know Thomas has Bill and Melinda Gates scholarship like. <laughs> He did good in school. I'm not an idiot. This was a good presentation. It was. It was a very good presentation. And at that age, you know, that could be considered something that's childish, but is a very real part of Japanese culture. Exactly. And she marked us down. And what I remember her telling me, and and I, I took it personally, but I'm realizing while I'm talking about it right now, maybe this woman was just ignorant and didn't do her own homework. Okay. Um, was that she told me, those festivals are not a major part 
of, right. of Japanese culture and that they're they're nowhere near as relevant as we as we proposedly made them in fuck our off. in our presentation and that is why she gave us a C. It basically said off. we made the whole presentation about this, you know, and so therefore it wasn't a good representation of Japanese festivals. And I was a troublesome kid in high school. And, White woman, and, by the uh, way. Yeah. Talk, telling me, you know, yeah. that I, I mean, know, that's that why she I wanted to better. clarify you're a fucking, you know, <laughs> you're half Japanese. And, yeah. and so I just really believed that it was just anything that they could do to fucking sabotage me. Cause you know, you know, the teachers there, what they weren't, they weren't a fan. Right. And, and let me uh, say this because we're talking a little bit about circumstance and we are wrapping up, but I'll, I, I, I'm a, I like to just defend people. I really do. Okay. You, know, you and it's like, okay, classroom management is something mm. that gets taught in graduate school for okay. teaching. And when you let, especially as a substitute, right? Mm. When you let a class, um, kind of not get out of control mm -hmm. because it mm -hmm. didn't, it no. didn't. Right. But she was so like, I don't know like paranoid or on edge about the possibility of that happening. Right. That that is what colored her perception of that. Right. And that doesn't make it okay. Um, but uh, I mean, you've, you've been in classrooms where the teacher has no control and what's the point of even being there at that point? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Dylan Hudson. Thank you so much. I mean, you're not a creative type, so I can, you don't have any like socials to really like try to get people to follow you on or any, any yeah. shit or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's just been a pleasure to have you on the show. And, uh, Wow, what a what a fun time! Hey, thanks to all of y'all for checking this out. This is a part of the Humanity EUG News platform, which and is awesome, by the way. Thanks, homie. Yeah. All right, y'all have a great day. Um, enjoy the remaining tw twenty one and a half hours of your day because you just committed to a, the longest podcast I have ever done, and it was dope. Cool. Peace.